three, two, one. The podcast you are about to listen to is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of three twenty something year olds and a thirty two twenty something year olds and a thirty year old. Uh, in particular, <laughs> Ralph Seppi and his invalid brother, Alex. It is all the more tragic that they were young, but had they lived very long lives, they could not have expected, nor would they have wished to see as much of the mad and macabre as they were to see that day. <laughs> By the way, the word macabre is just absolutely ruined for me. I'll explain it in a second. Uh, this is Adam from Your Movie Sucks. That was a quote from uh, B-Movie. Uh, this is Sardonicast. The recommendation. Yeah, Texas Chainsaw. Yeah. Uh, Ralph, movie maker. Hi. I'm Alex from, from Invalid Everything <laughs> Productions. <laughs> I do love that opening crawl, though. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, they it all have opening crawls. Really well. Yeah. Um, What's wrong with Macabre? Well, macabre. so I, yeah, word. I don't. Macabre. It's, it's such an uncommon word. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's not used that much in day to day conversation at all. You, you barely ever hear it, right? It's only no. in certain contexts. Yeah, and true. you know that that meme so people have taken like really bad acting from like porn movies and just posted it on YouTube just not including the porn scenes just the acting scene <laughs> and there's this one yeah, yeah. Uh, that spawned a meme it's a gay porn and it's like oh shit I'm sorry sorry for what my dad taught us not to be ashamed of our dicks right and that's just like a huge <laughs> meme a bunch of twitch streamers <laughs> sample it and shit and there, yeah, there's a smaller uh, lesser known section of the film where one of the actors says, I can't believe this story you're telling me. It's macabre. And just the way he says it is so <laughs> funny that every time I hear that word now, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, it's ruined. I can't hear, it. I ruined, can't hear that uh, word anymore. A nice word. It, it, I like macabre. It's a cool word. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a good word. It is specific enough to be easily ruined, though. I, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I need to read more literature or something. I think that's where I'm going to find it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People don't just say that word out loud a lot. Um, speaking of things being ruined, what's the fuck's going on with the Mario movie? <laughs> what's happening there? I have no that's idea an about amazing this. casting, yeah. that's what. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it better than the old one? Uh, with John Leguizamo and Bob Hoskins? <laughs> that's right. a classic. That I haven't yeah, seen, classic. so I'm what not gonna go into it. <laughs> oh, that movie's terrible, but this new one, who who's the cast now? Would they get? Do, do you want me to list these off? Yes, please. Here right now, mm -hmm. I've got the list here. <laughs> Let's start with the big one. Uh, Chris Pratt as Mario himself. How, what? How do we feel about this? <laughs> I know. I saw Dunkey's reaction too. It was so funny. Uh, just what the fuck? Yeah, I, it's the it's the one that stands out the most to me. It's like, how are they gonna do that? What voice is he gonna do? Is he gonna do like a an Italian accent, like Chris he's just Pratt. gonna do his own voice. He's just gonna, he's just gonna do his own. It's gonna be the Lego Movie. I don't know. Like, so he's gonna be Emmett from the Lego Movie. No, he's not even gonna fucking do that. He's not even gonna fucking do that. It's I a really me, doubt it. Mario. They're just gonna <laughs> take the Mario so. skins, like the skins of the characters, and then just have these like regular actors playing themselves, sort of thing. That's like, that's what I'm expecting. Yeah, sure. Because honestly, what's his name? Charles Martinet. As much as he is the mm -hmm. voice of the character, I don't know if I could fucking handle an entire Mario movie with like a bunch of dialogue of just <laughs> "It's a me!" like the entire fucking. Who can, who I don't can think fucking I can handle, handle that, a right? Mario movie full stop? I think it's, it's just in a, a video bad game. Idea. It's different. Yeah. They're all like cartoon characters. Well, I mean, they're like sound effects to like jumping. He's not really having a lot of conversation. Most of it's text, yeah. right? Yeah. Whenever you have a cutscene yeah. in those games. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, sure. I half expected them to kind of invent their own character just for the movie or something like that, or have like a kid is sucked into the game type thing. Um, oh, no. But I guess <laughs> that would be better. With the, uh... That actually sounds much better than what they're coming up with, probably. Yeah, <laughs> instead get to meet Mario. As Mario. Um, yeah. As Peach, it's Anya Taylor Joy, sort of a trending actor right now. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't see. She's she's not so typecast yet that I'm just going to be like, oh, that's impossible sort of thing. Like, even if she was trying to yeah. replicate the original Peach, I can imagine like, oh, if she does a different voice, then sure. Like, that could, if they were trying to recapture well, that. Yeah, reading, like, anyone's name after the Chris Pratt one just seems like nothing in comparison. But Charlie Day is Luigi. How do you feel about that? <laughs> it's funny. Charlie Day? <laughs> Yeah, uh, for some oh, reason Ralph, I can know. see that working more than everyone. No, <laughs> that's funny. How did you not know that? What the fuck? No, I didn't know any of these. I, I think I heard. I think I heard about Chris Pratt, maybe uh, like being really on. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like glad we got a genuine ago, reaction. But like the rest here. of them, though, 
That that's so bad. <laughs> Did you see none of the pictures of like Danny DeVito edited to be yeah, like yeah, Mario, yeah. like from Always Sunny? A bunch of fresh memes. <laughs> that genuinely memes. would be better. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> they could have done something like the Sonic movie. Bowser. Bowser's a weird one. <laughs> we got Jack Black. <laughs> Jack okay. Black's voice of Bowser this time. Yeah, it's just be a voice, right? Yeah. They should all be animated. They should use like the models from the games. That's what I think. And then kind of go with your idea, Alex. Like they either come out of the game or a kid goes in. Like I think that's better. Well, th this makes me think that it's just going to be set in the game, just straight up all in universe. Like weird. Yeah. What was, what was the Mario game that actually had voice acting? The one time they tried it and then quickly abandoned oh, it. Oh, I have Super no Mario idea. Sunshine. Oh, really? Yeah. Like it had really weird cutscenes with like Bowser had a voice and uh, Bowser Junior, and they talked to each oh, other, and it was all very strange. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm kind of hyped to see how they're going to pull off. But Jack Black as Bowser, Poe from Kung Fu Panda is going to be Bowser. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> Keegan Michael Key is Toad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Missed the chance to have like like Illumination is already familiar with Kevin Hart with that bunny character. He's got yeah. a shrill mm -hmm. like Toad. <laughs> I just yeah, I mean like if we're if if the goal is to recapture how they sound in the games, just get the games voice actors. But you can't do that because then your movie doesn't get greenlit. So it, clearly they have mm -hmm. to just change what the goal is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's weird. They, like Toad gets a whole thing, yeah. but Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. That's funny. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Pumba. <laughs> Pumba's back. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the, yeah, the last three are Fred Armisen as Cranky Kong, Kevin Michael Richardson as Kamek, who's that wizard, I, I think? That mm -hmm. wizard oh, thing okay. from I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, and Sebastian Maniscalco as Spike. Mm. Oh, Miss Sebastian Maniscalco. He's like an Italian comedian. He's big like in New oh, York. Yeah. I'm just Mario. trying to think who Spike yeah. is in Mario. Well, Spike Lee is playing remember. Waluigi. Oh, really? No. <laughs> some, good, yeah, some good memes have come out of this. Yeah. I like Fred Armiston. He's a little underrated, I think. Yeah. Can you see him as Cranky Kong? Does that make you hype? Sure. Uh, I, I mean, my only interpretation of Cranky Kong is from the Donkey Kong animated series, <laughs> which is like nightmare fuel animation standards for today, you know? I don't. I, I barely <laughs> remember. I, I feel like he could pull it off even if he was trying to do that, probably, you know? I hope it's like that Nightmare Fuel show. That, that that was awesome. I love watching clips of that. Yeah, that's a fun. There's a VR chat world where it's literally just <laughs> they keep they play episodes of that, and the entire room is like Donkey Kong themed. <laughs> it's really funny. That's so wrong. I know. Oh my god, it's just so creepy. Yeah. So I I guess uh, what most people are not talking about. Most people are just looking at the cast, being like, "What the fuck?" Obviously, not a lot of people are familiar with the fact that it's just illumination and what baggage that comes with it right so that's a whole oh, different yeah. can of worms and it kind of explains the casting decisions to be honest it's like what were people expecting? yeah definitely it's not surprising They're just going for it's... popular people. yeah yeah just whoever's yeah. Like the biggest name like you know, chris pratt is big he'll be mario effort um i go wow. to whoever's writing it as well um and we got matthew fogel who wrote the Lego Movie 2. Oh, God. And Minions, mm. The Rise of Gru. Mm. Oh, and Big Mama's wow. Let Father Light Son. So we're in good Big hands. Big Mama. <laughs> That's like, yeah. Uh-oh. That's the weird part, because then also Shigeru Miyamoto is credited for the characters, but it's like, really? Did, That's... Were Nintendo not going to put, like, put their foot down here? Be like, just at least get someone a bit more creative on board exactly. to write the screenplay. People, but... people don't know how to interpret those sorts of credits. Like, when they credit that as a writing credit and put in parentheses characters that just means they created the characters right yeah yeah, yeah. unless they're credited as mm -hmm. screenplay they didn't have anything to do with the screenplay it's just they're using pre-existing characters from that person so yeah i just figured that because all the stories over the years um like when this was announced they they tried to make out that yeah nintendo were going to be a bit, take this seriously like <laughs> really apply themselves more so to protect the brand so i'm curious how that will play out if it can hold back the illumination isms we all know and love, but I really have no hope for this at all. Mm. The only thing Nintendo is gonna, gonna do is like maybe say like that joke's too edgy or something. <laughs> like I don't know if there's yeah, a lot of far, integrity going into this project. <laughs> I think they might just be like no yeah. sex <laughs> jokes. <laughs> I don't know. 
They got to keep Mario pure. Yeah, we'll see where their priorities are from that first trailer. Even though the cast oh, kind of is already no, I'm just saying we'll, we'll, oh, we'll see exactly what they're going for from from that trailer when it drops yeah. and explodes uh, the internet because it's going to be huge. You think the title will uh, shrink the amount of words they have right now? The full title is Super Mario Bros: Colon the Movie. Do you think they'll just call it the that Mario movie? Because that that's really easy. Just the Mario movie. Why not? Yeah, the the like algorithm monitors will figure it out for them. I yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Stuff. Well, yeah, I saw a comment saying, "Hey, don't the Sonic movie turned out awesome, guys? Like, just yeah. chill. Like, <laughs> we're in good hands here. Don't judge yeah. it before it's out. It would have turned out worse if people didn't judge it before it was out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> wasn't that yeah, the whole lesson? Forget. To the, wasn't that the takeaway? Is <laughs> <was> the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope it's as good as Free Guy. Oh God! It's as good as Free Guy was, and I'll be very satisfied. I hope they like change all the designs of the Mario characters to actually have like creepy, like CG faces. Of, like it's actually just Chris Pratt, like kind of on Mario's body or something. Yeah, I don't know. At this that point, would be just funny. fucking do the whole thing. Ironically, don't even make it animated. Just have Chris Pratt wearing a red shirt or some shit. Yeah, you know? I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> you can be a crazy man who thinks he's Mario. Yeah, or well, just don't make it. Like it's annoying. There's so mm -hmm. many good video games out there and so many good worlds that could be elaborated on or explored in a fun way in a movie. And, I, and there could be a good Mario movie. Like, it could be done. But God, it'd be difficult, I think. Um, if a good Lego like movie shorts. exists, then yeah. Yeah. But that was held up by those writers, you know? Like, yeah. it needs a good idea, a good backbone, but I, don't, I just don't trust this team. Yeah. <laughs> not, not like we would ever expect, like, a fucking Mario movie to be great or anything, <laughs> you know? Could be. Yeah, I'm could, just scared what this is going to You say that about like the in. Lego movie or anything. Yeah. yeah. Like if you told me the Lego movie, I'd be like, yeah, it sounds like shit, but it actually turned out good. Oh, yeah. Never I even thought based on the trailer, it's, it looked like shit. I was actually yeah, shocked sure. when people were telling me to go see it and it had like a crazy meta score and Rotten Tomatoes. I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. And I went to the theater by myself and I was like, you know what? This was actually really great. That was like one of the yeah. biggest disconnects I've had from like expectations versus uh like watching the film that's cool mm -hmm, for sure and like it got high reviews and it actually deserved it like <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like some movies that come out now like free guy free guy's one of them got high reviews and it's really not that good but you know yeah whatever anyway there's some other movie news it's fucking our boy dennis villanueve <laughs> or denny <laughs> villeneuve again. if you want to denny villeneuve be pretentious yeah. about it, Is it he said some stuff <laughs> He was asked about Marvel movies, and now it's at the point where there's so there's been so many times where this has happened. What was it? The last one was Martin Scorsese, and then there's Scorsese. probably a few other ones. Mm -hmm. There's been so many times that this has happened that now people are actually just turning on the interviewers for asking these questions. <laughs> a lot of people are like, can you just stop asking yeah. directors about Marvel movies? Because, like, honestly, what do you expect them to say, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said uh, some Marvel movies are cut and paste of the other ones. Let's see. Perhaps the problem is that we are in front of too many Marvel movies that are nothing more than a cut, cut and paste of others, he said. Perhaps these types yeah. of movies have turned us into zombies a bit. But big and, ex and expensive movies of great value, there are many today. I don't feel capable of being pessimistic at all. So that was his quote, and a lot of people are angry. What do you guys think? So that's what got everyone mad. When you read it like that, it just sounds like nothing. Like it. Who is surprised Denise Villeneuve? Villeneuve. Yes feels this way about marvel movies like oh my god like really the guy who directed like enemy <laughs> yeah Ain't that's the guy B. who loves marvel <laughs> <laughs> yeah even his big budget stuff is better than like marvel yeah, movies. even prisoners <laughs> mm -hmm. like Blade which is, Runner. prisoners yeah. is like a by the books sort of movie you know but it's i don't know it's, yeah, it's, it's really really well made and it's it's super great cinematography. yeah yeah blade runner too yeah yeah it's it's just kind of funny because like when people are surprised that a director like Denis Villeneuve says this, it's it's like it almost kind of speaks to like uh, just I guess a broader misunderstanding of what types of directors these are. 
Like, I don't know how anybody would be surprised by it. In the same way that, like, Martin Scorsese. Like, yeah, what do you expect him to say about Marvel movies? <laughs> like, with Martin Scorsese. <laughs> yeah, he directed Taxi Driver. Raging Bull. <laughs> yeah, like, like, whether, whether or not you Raging think... Raging Bull and then watch, like, I don't know, Black <laughs> <Yeah>. Widow. <laughs> like <laughs> Whether or not you think Marvel movies are better than what those directors make, you have to at least understand that there is a difference between them, right? You have to... You have clear to difference. At least recognize that they are different things. So to expect them to be totally into the movies that they act go out of their way not to make mm -hmm. is kind of weird <laughs> you know yeah. otherwise they'd just be making those movies i'm sure they would get a great paycheck out of it you know mm -hmm. yeah marvel goes for like a very broad mm -hmm. audience and they're not they're not really denny villeneuve's not interested in that as much he just wants to make something great and like have a vision of wow. something you know you see an artist's vision carried out on screen that's there's a clear difference he's definitely looking for an audience for dune i know that much yeah yeah, they're supposed and to I be think a it sequel, extends outside right? so. Marvel movies. I think Free Guy is one of those kind of movies mm -hmm. too. It's just like a cut and paste, or like any Hollywood yeah. movie you see nowadays. A lot of them, especially Disney ones, or any other fucking company they own. You know, yeah. 20th Century Fox or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Here's my question though: Is like, there are Marvel fans. I don't understand why they would get upset at someone saying that some of the Marvel films are similar to each other when, like, if they weren't, then. Why would you watch them, right? Like you, you're a Marvel yeah, fan because point. you like seeing <laughs> that appeal. type of thing, right? Like you're you're a fan of that type of movie. If the movies were so mm -hmm. radically different from each other, then you probably wouldn't be a fan of them, right? Like that's sure. that's my thought process, I guess. They're I very know. consistent, and yeah, they're very episodic. Where everyone's all, it's kind of the same, but kind of different. Yeah. Like not every sure. single Marvel movie is the exact same, but there are some that are like yeah. kind of. Similar, they have right? a formula, and they stick to it. Yeah. But, you know, it's better than not knowing what you're going to see, and it sucks, <laughs> which is what, you know, yeah, people have the experience dependable. of. People don't want to see a shitty movie. They want to see something that they're going to enjoy. Yeah. And if it has Marvel on it, they at least know that it's that formula. Very true. And, like, yeah, it's safe. Yeah. And then movies like Dune and Blade Runner aren't safe. You don't know what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So that's why people steer away from it. And them. even those, yeah. I mean, like, there's a bit more certainty because A, big name director, B, previously existing intellectual property right but i think i think the mm -hmm. kind of uh sad reality is that the majority of people don't know how to discover things that they like and so that's why that marvel badge that seal of approval becomes like very comforting to people and not to say you know if you like marvel that's totally fine mm -hmm. that's good like nothing wrong with that but i do think that people would be a bit better off if they were able to navigate films and filmmakers in a way where they could be like oh here are these different factors and this might mean that i might enjoy this or that i might not enjoy it you know just even knowing who directed it is something that most people yeah. don't really know when they go in to see a movie it's mostly just actors True. that's why they're on the poster hugh jackman's in it i'm gonna see this that doesn't mean anything about the film's mm -hmm. quality it really doesn't mm -hmm. so that's why people see a movie and then they go like ah that was shit and then they feel safer knowing mm -hmm. like oh it's marvel because they <laughs> they might not get burned as badly. <laughs> yeah, it's just why you react so emotionally to it. Like mm -hmm. it's like uh, I enjoy Marvel movies, right? Probably definitely more than Adam. I guess me and Ralph we've enjoyed like what they put out somewhat. Um, but it's more of a discussion yeah. of yeah, there's some better ones, there's some weaker ones. It's you know, it's not as simple as that. But also at the same time, you can break down what this director's saying and be like, yeah, he, he has a point. It, he, it's more complicated than just, yeah, this thing bad, this thing good, full stop. Like, why, mm -hmm. why does it always have to turn into that? Like, apparently, like, the Dune, like, reviews are being, like, review bombed by, like, angry Marvel oh, fans yeah? and stuff. It's just oh, like, that's just terrible. Like, why? I, this review bombing thing is just so toxic you're like why would you how is that even relevant to the film oh it's like, not it, it's fucking <laughs> yeah. terrible like people who don't even they, they probably don't even watch the movie they don't pay attention they just like fucking yeah they have their opinion made up already well i mean like what a shocker that people that rate highly the movies that they want to see before they're out would also rate lowly <laughs> films that they're angry or <laughs> that are associated with people that yeah, they're angry sure. about before they're out mm -hmm. you know they're like hack critics, yeah. And they give every Marvel movie a 9 yeah. out of 10 or whatever. It's, Those are yeah, hacks. They're not like, they're not masterpieces. Anything that has a fan base, basically, is like susceptible to this. I feel like I broke it down pretty well. It's a very consistent brand that they have. Like every movie mm -hmm. you go see, yeah. at least you're getting a decent movie. Like you're getting a decent experience. And like Hollywood's the same way. Like, you know, the whole studio system there, they just produce 
ton of bad movies all the fucking time. Like when you compare it to like Marvel, like Marvel's not produced as many bad movies as Hollywood has. <laughs> you know, yeah. There, there's a less yeah, quality. I mean, there's less volume, but still, it's that's just the system. Sometimes you get a bad movie. Sometimes you get something better. But but Marvel more often they're just kind of bland. But they're not bad. Like Justice League is bad. That's why I like the <laughs> yeah. Marvel formula because it's like at least you get something like okay, right? It's usually just shit like. Like Green Lantern. Yeah, I'm like more interested in uh, DC movies because I like seeing things that are like unexpected, even if they're bad. You know, sure, but they're also bad. <laughs> like, I don't know. They're, they're not entertaining. They're very yeah, boring. This is the opposite approach. I bought Aquaman on 4K. <laughs> you know, yeah, nice. I don't know why you did that because it's epic, Ralph. <laughs> uh, that's the correct decision. Uh... Is this a good enough segue? Speaking of director Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we good? Hell yes. All right. Speaking of James Wan, director of Aquaman, he also released as another movie That's recently right. called new Malignant. One. And um, spoilers, because how can you fucking talk about this movie without spoiling the whole thing? Just I would, yeah. say, I would say before we talk about it, watch it. <laughs> if, if I were to give my like uh, yeah. really quick review yeah. of this without Going spoiling blind. it, I would say... You have to suffer for through the first two acts of the film, but the payoff in the third act is definitely worth it. That's my yeah. Quick I have review. not yeah. seen this film. I heard the third act. Oh is shit! Amazing. I don't mind you guys spoiling it. Oh, you don't yeah. mind? It's okay. Go ahead. No, I don't mind. Okay. <laughs> I heard the third act. It becomes like John Wick or something. Basically, <laughs> we're not <just> spoiling. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds kind of funny. You said there's just there's a certain Spoilers. scene where when it reaches it, it's like <laughs> the prison scene, right? I guess is what you're referencing, but like the big oh, okay. reveal scene know. towards the end. Um, yeah, it, I I don't know if I've quite experienced this before where I was, you know, I, I want to love this movie. I love James Wan, the kind of movies he makes. I love the energy he brings, but God, he, <laughs> some of his choices can be really confusing sometimes. Um, oh, yeah. And yeah, you're right. For the first like half, well, two thirds, there's some just questionable stuff. And it's like, where is this going? What is the tone? Like this, these music choices are so odd. Very this, conflicting the, like, tones. Yeah, Very conflicting. but then <laughs> during that scene where it kind of reveals what's going on and it does erupt into this crazy violent action horror <laughs> campy bloodbath, it did win me over there and it made it feel like more of a reward because like I, I was noticing during the early scenes a lot of the kind of horror slash action moments are with a sort of ghostly character that I just thought it was like some kind of ghoul or goblin yeah. or th something, but it was like, it looked like a human that was acting backwards. And I thought that was just a sort of the typical man, horror movie choice. Man, to... I can walk back, yeah, back. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking about. All along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and I, but I thought it was cool that that was actually part of the, the story. And it was like, oh, the, all those scenes earlier then were the main character all along. It's like... You put in the work somewhat for this payoff to be to be a huge payoff and make it feel worth it. It's mm -hmm. just I don't know if I want to see it again anytime soon, and if it would make those previous scenes better. I'll see it again eventually. Yeah, that's the thing because I do want to, and there, there is something there is something odd and unique about it. Mm -hmm. You can definitely tell he's been working on like huge studio movies, like with the yeah. way he uses like the camera and oh, stuff shit, and yeah. like action scenes yeah. now. It's, yeah. it's quite a funny contrast because um, yeah. a couple of months ago, uh, I just had the urge to watch the, the original Saw. Hell yeah. And I was kind of, I was blown away by how reserved it is compared to his style now. Um, so I thought that <laughs> yeah, was like, a they're... funny contrast with like this movie and kind yeah. of the level it's at now. And it, it either really works or it really doesn't with him, I mm -hmm. find. Because I think he's actually really good at action. Yeah. He makes it interesting. I feel for like he's sure. really good with visuals. Yeah. Even just The Conjuring, which I've seen from him, that's a really good looking movie. Like, yeah. The cinematography's great in that. I'm not yeah. upset at the action in his movies for the most part, depending on the scene. Because there's some, like, I don't know. There's some parts in some of his, if you want to go to Aquaman, like, just all done in a computer sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. But there well, are some parts that are sure. really fun. Um, and he's yeah, he's got like a real sure. signature feel to there's like a certain type of scene a certain type of shot where it's like swooping around the character as they're fighting and the mm -hmm. the depth of field is just like so off from the rest of the movie I think it's just like a wider lens possibly yeah he, he yeah, likes yeah. I was gonna say he likes those wide lenses yeah. he often in just in a certain like context there's like yeah there's like that uh, 
yeah, I, I, I'm. There's like parallels between his movies of like a very distinct Definitely. shot and a very distinct shot together. I'm like, oh, two different movies, but you, you know, it's like um, Quentin Tarantino's trunk shot almost, or Michael Bay's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, go around yeah. the characters 360 degrees sort of thing. Yeah, you can always tell when he's directing. Mm -hmm. Michael Bay has a lot of those, yeah, yeah. telephoto lens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so to to talk about what the fuck is happening in this movie, so a <laughs> woman is in an abusive relationship and gets uh, shoved into a wall by a guy that uh, I the only other movie I've seen him in was uh, Stephanie Meyer's The Host in 2013. He was one of the boys that uh, <laughs> Saoirse Ronan had to decide which to kiss <laughs> mm -hmm. and pushes her into a wall, hits her head and she's like, oh, and then from that moment on, she starts witnessing in a kind of an out of body experience these murders happening and she's like no i like see people as they die and then she like contacts the authorities and her friend and she's like no there's a murder over here and then they go and they're like oh there was a murder over here you must be psychic and then it turns out as we get further into the movie that as she reveals her past she finds out that there she has a essentially a conjoined twin but not conjoined twin because it it's more of a parasite because it lives off of her to survive and it's it's literally mm -hmm. in the goofiest <laughs> fashion it's <laughs> it's like its face is behind her hair in the back of her head and it's been controlling her backwards to commit these murders <laughs> but because it's controlling part of her brain it's making her believe that she's witnessing it in a like in an out of body omniscient sort of like like I I'm, I'm actually over here when she's actually the one doing it but backwards. Mhm. Mm <laughs> Not like backwards like tenant oh. but like facing backwards. Yeah. Like the end of her first Harry Potter. And so we you get glimpses of the villain earlier in the film and it's like oh just some like long-haired creepy skinny like walks funny sort of thing. But then it's like oh yeah it's just her walking backwards. <laughs> like, and she's got like a weird face in the back of her head. And from the reveal until the end of the film, it like it's so satisfying and action packed and just like nonsensical. Where it's clear from that moment on, at least, it's very clear what the tone is. It's goofy fun. Before that point, yeah, it just the tone is it. not very consistent or clear. Before that point, it's just a whole yeah. fucking jumbled mess of conflicting oh yeah it's so messy attempts at emotions like, right? what emotion do you want me to feel <laughs> like yeah, it's what, fucking how bizarre. should i be interpreting <laughs> yeah. this yeah it's really strange so you have to suffer through the first two thirds basically and then you get a really satisfying mm. payoff all right yeah yeah it's fun <laughs> it's a lot of fun yeah, it sounds fun yeah but yeah, yeah it I, sounds interesting even, even though even though i've spoiled the twist for you you can't really spoil the experience because me just yeah. me just saying that it's action packed and satisfying that does not do it justice. Like when you see the last half hour of this movie or whatever, or the last yeah, yeah, it, it'll it'll be a satisfying watch even if you know what's coming. But yeah, wow. Yeah, I just so fucking. I wish he was able to get that campiness and the maybe a bit of commentary or something into the earlier scenes. Was it's just like awkward, clunky exposition and like kind of done to death procedural like cop stuff you know yeah and so much of it feels oddly rushed in the story despite the movie being like what almost two hours or something what's the length of this movie it's like an hour 40 or so oh an hour 50 yeah yeah it is quite long yeah slightly too long i'd say for for the premise at least for how goofy and silly it is yeah the music is way over the top well, yeah, because it goes from like, are you trying to scare me or are you trying to impress me with like action chase scenes? Mm -hmm. You're just like, what? what? Which what? For the intro of the film and for the first, I don't know, like, I don't think this feeling ever left me, but I got the feeling that it was like a fake movie within another movie. Like the beginning of the movie, I was like, they're going to pan back and it's going to be what the character's watching on TV, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like this yeah, is this is a joke to, right now, right? Set up to mean something. <laughs> but then it yeah. never never was. <laughs> and so it was so weird. Yeah, uh, he just comes up with these concepts that are just enough and they're explored just enough to carry it and make it worth it because of that energy he brings. But like it would fall apart without him. Like, oh my it, god. It, it's just all about his his goofy take on it. Just taking that concept to its extreme is is funny. 
I'm just reading mm -hmm. over some of my notes and just refreshing <laughs> certain moments, like because the soundtrack <laughs> was all over the place, and I have this one one line that I wrote down. Wrote down Sydney. I'm adopted, and then just like this badass '80s drive style music immediately starts playing. Like, bum, bum, hey, that's bum, right. it's just like, what the fuck? It's just, it's the just epic it's remixes so of the, that Pixies song from Fight yeah. Club. Really odd. But the action's really fun. Um, yeah, oh, you man. mentioned the um, the uh, am was it the amnesia? It has both like amnesia and adoption as like part of the yeah. It's fucking the way it's structured. <laughs> it's <laughs> so dumb. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun action. It just needed a bit more tongue in cheek to make it feel like you're along laughing with it as opposed to like, what? what? What's going on here? Yeah. yeah. There needed to be more clear self awareness for what was going on in the whole first two thirds of the movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't, it's, it's so, I, I don't know if I could replicate something with that film's tone if I tried. It's so bizarre. Like, it doesn't no. make any sense. It feels like a disaster of a film, but at the same time, there are still there are still elements that really work about it. What's funny is, like, this, this yeah, feels like more enjoyable. of a jumbled mess than, like, Aquaman in terms of tone, and that movie was, like, all over the place, too. Mm -hmm. This is more satisfying, yeah, for it, sure. It's a better movie, I would say. Yeah, more it's like a whole one. piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, okay. it's, it's, it doesn't have the kind of ironic enjoyment that I get out of the just bloat of something like Aquaman. This is actually just more James Wan and his roots kind of coming up with a fun horror concept and properly exploring it. Well, mm -hmm. half properly exploring mm -hmm. it. I'm I, I'm curious how it would hold up on rewatch because like this is really one of them where that would be illuminating. I think my rewatch might be better. Yeah, I, I yeah, I have a feeling it might be because it, it, on my rewatch I might be more confident about laughing at slash with the movie i guess i might just not yeah, care as much yeah. knowing what's coming yeah i'll definitely give it another chance um it just yeah just slightly too long for the past yeah. years i think also uh shout out to uh zoe bell cameo in the prison from uh oh yeah cool. yeah death proof yeah, yeah she works with tarantino yeah a lot. and also in, uh, once upon a time james yeah. wine and lee winnell are australian i think so did either yeah. of you see Upgrade? Yeah. I saw Upgrade. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed that. It had some really good action, unique take on action. Yeah. I feel it, it, it's, I can think of like two movies in the past five years where I'm like, this is a five out of 10 film, but I really like it and I'll see it again. And that's Upgrade and Malignant. <laughs> it's just <laughs> these two guys. Mm. Although the tone in Upgrade yeah. is much more consistent, but there's just so much stupid shit. Upgrade, it's more clear what it's going for. Yeah, that's a fun comparison, actually. Yeah. The action in particular, and I see what you mean with that kind of that energy it brings. Yeah. What would you give it? I think we're, we've are we talked about Yeah, this. it's definitely not like a deep movie, I don't think, by any means. It's just kind of what it is, says on the tin. It's a fun concept horror movie directed by James Wan, and that comes with all the good and bad it brings. So... I give it a, a solid three star. Mm -hmm. I really like it. It could go up with rewatch or possibly go down, yeah. depending on how boring I find it with I, that runtime. But check I, it out for sure. I wanted so badly to give it a a six out of ten, but I just couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't uh, forget <laughs> about the first two thirds of the movie. I just, you know? Yeah, like, I, just I just love that. When you last end really right. strong, I'm just. I got to be careful not to yeah. forget about mm -hmm. the rest of the experience. <laughs> But fun movie. I think it's good. I think it's good to end strong. I mean, that influences like if the end a lot of the movie's ratings. the best part. Exactly. Yeah. Fucking like, whiplash. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Super that, strong that's what ending. Because it does feel like it's building to something. That's why. Yeah. That's probably why people liked Precious. <laughs> it's better than like a movie that gets worse. I, I hate movies that get worse as they go. Oh yeah. yeah. A movie that gets better as it goes along. Fucking, it's a little uh, more interesting. Place Beyond the Pines. Yeah. Mm, like the yeah, first yeah, yeah. third of that movie's fucking incredible. And then, just <laughs> and like, then uh... like the rest of it sucks balls. <laughs> like it's <Yeah>. terrible. <laughs> so fucking cliche and corny. All right. It's time for the movie recommendation from Ralph. Yeah. Uh so I recommended a horror movie for Halloween. Whoop. <laughs> oh, it's scary. Finally, it's from 1974 <laughs> and it's called The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's a fucking great title. <laughs> Although what's weird about so... the title is that it's Chain Space Saw and all the other ones are just chainsaw as one word. So what's the proper yeah. spelling of chainsaw? Not sure. Oh, yeah. That is Let's weird. See. 
chain if I look up the product of a chainsaw, I'm get I'm actually getting both. I'm gonna just type chainsaw or chainsaw. So this, yeah, it's really <laughs> on the IMDb page. Like the the title has them separated, but on the yeah. poster they're joined. Oh, really? <laughs> it's so confusing. <laughs> yeah. Well, Wikipedia says both are correct, so whatever. Oh, okay. Oh. Feels like one word to me. Yeah, they but... they should have just stuck with one. Yeah. <laughs> But as far as what the movie's about, um, I guess everyone knows Leatherface. He's like the serial killer that mm -hmm. like is fr it goes through all the series. It's like spoilers. he's like the Jason Voorhees. <laughs> um, yeah, spoilers for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He's he, uh, Leatherface is like the Jason Voorhees or like Michael Myers of the series. Mm -hmm. But like uh, just again in the plot, um, spoilers. Once it starts, it's not really that kind of movie like in the beginning at all. It's not like a slasher yeah. movie. You follow these teenagers, which I guess is a little conventional, but they just kind of come across this hitchhiker. And the movie goes down this whole other path. And and then, you know, they go in the woods for a bit after the hitchhiker uh, you know, does himself. And and there's like, it just becomes a very, it's like very unpredictable, the film. <laughs> I don't know. And then toward the end is when it gets in the leather face and all that. And you discover this, um, that there's this inbred hillbilly like family that are cannibals also. And they, they steal these teenagers and, and make them into food and they eat them. And it's it's really fucked up and and kind of goofy, but at the same time, it's so it's so blunt and visceral. Mm -hmm. It's so it works. It's mm -hmm. considered one of the greatest horror movies ever. And, it's macabre. You know, watching it, it is it is scary. It's it is macabre. macabre. It, it's scary at times. Like you know, there's 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 a lot of themes of um female uh, uh oppression, I guess, or female um you know being. I mean, you literally see a guy fucking chasing Lots a woman agency. with a chainsaw. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and like that imagery is really scary. Like the the tone of this movie and the themes of this movie are very clear. It's about like female victimization by men, and it's about violence, and it's about you know Texas, how fucked up it is. <laughs> like production. there's all these things going on that are so interesting and so mm -hmm. intelligent within this movie. That is really like it's just a guy fucking chasing a woman around with a chainsaw, and it works on basically every level. You know, I, I feel anyway. I think it's a great horror movie. I'm curious what you guys have to say about it. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. This is my third time seeing it. Um and that's all within twenty twenty one. I'd never actually seen it before. Um mm -hmm. but during the one of the lockdowns we had this year, I just randomly had the urge to check it out and only watched I think half of it that time because I just wasn't wasn't ready for that kind of uh that kind of vibe at that moment. But then a few weeks later I jumped back in and watched the whole thing and couldn't stop thinking about it um and over time just liked it more and more and then rewatching it again uh yesterday mm -hmm. yeah this is this is a really unique horror movie and yeah you're saying that that just the dedication to this this concept they came up with and this the kind of the folky tales of the kind of serial killer that lives in the middle of nowhere in texas the whole hitchhiker angle mm -hmm. it's very authentically 70s and the way it devolves it does feel so natural and like it, there is no like hardcore plotting even though there is like really good setups and payoffs like the whole um sure the wheelchair character talking about the slaughterhouse and how like they don't die after being smacked for the first mm -hmm. time and it's that's how one of the first kills goes down later on it's just really effective horror cinema that is yeah. incredibly expressive as well through not a lot of like wasted time in terms of just talking and pointless dialogue like we were saying and um malignant earlier with like exposition it's not weighed down by anything like that it all it all speaks for itself and like the that setting of the the house towards the end that's when it really like becomes <laughs> yeah. truly horrifying to me with and <laughs> reading about all the behind the scenes and how like the actual flesh and smell of that room and that texas heat and just how you, you really mm -hmm. see the pain coming through on the, you the do, performances. Actually. And, it, oh, and so... even watching uh, the sequels, because I've watched all the sequels, which we might get into a little bit, but they, they just don't capture that horror. Like even the third one tries to capture yeah. some of the same scenes, like the end scene when she's running away from Leatherface or like when the guy gets killed and, and Leatherface closes the door. Or, like they try to recapture those moments and they're just not as intense mm -hmm. and they're not as scary because the way this movie captures it, um, uh, Toby Hooper directed this film. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I think he did a great job. Uh, he directed the second one too, which is much goofier. Um, was it his first feature as well? No, yeah. I don't think so. Oh no, 
Well, okay. I looked on IMDb. Seems he had like... other credits. I don't think they were all shorts. Sure. It looks like a very cheap movie. Um, I want to talk about the look of it because that's I actually like that. I'm not saying it as a criticism. It's shot on, I believe, eight millimeter film or sixteen mm-hmm. millimeter. It looks like a whole movie almost. Like it's really low quality. Um, yeah. And and that I think adds a lot to it because it feels even though it's a very goofy situation, the characters are a little over the top. It does add a a, a layer of believability to it for sure. And mm-hmm. it makes you feel like you're actually watching kind of a snuff film, which is really scary. Like at mm-hmm. times, like at that end scene when she's fucking getting chased by Leatherface, like that's that's horrifying. Like it feels real when you're watching it. Yeah, yeah, almost yeah, like a documentary. It's, it's really it's, great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like 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 a documentary. Yeah, it's really great. Like horror filmmaking. Like, oh my god, this the audience was like totally into this shit. Probably. Back yeah. Then. Here's here's the other thing is that like you look at the origins of so many horror franchises, Halloween. Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. Which one's the earliest one? Because many of those go into... Uh, yeah, this is before Halloween. Halloween's like 1978. Like the slasher genre? Yeah, yeah so Halloween, like this, I think... That's 78. Oh, yeah? Yeah. When and was this? this? Is 74. It's 74. So I yeah, think this yeah. might be... If we, were to, if we were to say one is the one, I guess this might be it, you know? Like what... Texas Chainsaw. What was like sure. successful and, you know, inspired a lot of copycats, obviously. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. There might be something before that. But. Well, it's one of those like osmosis movies that you kind of know a lot about before even seeing, you know, it's mm-hmm. one of those pop culture, like you, mm-hmm. you, you know about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, even if you haven't seen yeah. it. Yeah. And also what a fucking title. It's inspired so many things. Yeah. yeah. It's an amazing Well, when title. you say the title, it sounds like you're describing an event. Like, exactly. <laughs> did you see yeah. the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? You're like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> that's a great, that's why it's a great title. Um, and they definitely did the whole this is real thing in the title card too it probably helps you know yeah there this is a real story and yeah. yeah that title card at the it's beginning macabre. i think it, they do that in every movie because i think it really works it, it makes it feel more believable mm-hmm. um you see like the dead body and it's really disturbing uh mm-hmm. there's a there, there's violence in this movie i, I want to add it's not really bloody like it's not that compared to like friday the 13th yeah. <laughs> or like something like that it's more about the tone and like the the sound, especially the sound, like the screaming and the chainsaw and all of that. That's what makes it like really yeah. frightening. It's not about the blood and the gore. That's what makes it so scary. The implied horror. So I watched uh, this one and the 2003 remake. And we'll get into that more in, with more detail in a bit. But one of the things that really stood out to me in terms of contrast between the two is the way that the soundtrack is treated because in the 1974 film Mm. the soundtrack isn't very orchestral it's more ambient right there's a lot of droney kind of like creepy weird off-putting noises but it's not doing like a minor chord to tell you to feel scared or sad you know it's it's Mm -hmm. it's so much more effective at its tone and then you go look at the 2003 one and it's literally just like oh god like (laughs) like it's going for actual notes like an an actual orchestral uh, score and it's just damn it feels so much more manipulative like fuck you really want me to feel this right now like this is is so lame but it's it's just so much more effective in the uh 74 film and toby hooper did uh, part of the soundtrack too he's credited so Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, the sound is one of the biggest contributing factors to the the, the scares to me. Like it, in horror, especially, it's just so important mm-hmm. to just putting you off edge and taking you to those places you don't expect. And they really do that. And yeah. Actually, in com- combination with the editing too, there's some really creative sequences and just like flashing of frames of like weird close-ups of skulls and. It's just like there's so much density to look the like the frame in terms of the set dressing, just so much stuff to look at and the environments. It's there's a lot going on. And you you mentioned the whole kind of the 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 woman angle and the the way it's all explored through this kind of weird family, this weird hierarchy where they've got like the the grandparents guy yeah. in the chair <laughs> yeah, who does blood <laughs> Yeah, I, I was I focused, I guess, more on the whole the slaughterhouse angle and it kind of taking the teenager characters and making them kind of go into a slaughterhouse in a similar way to what the animals were going yeah, through. Yeah, true. Sort of sure. Early on in There's the movie definitely, and, yeah. 
There's definitely a lot of that yes. going on too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it has a, a yeah, it, you can kind of <laughs> yeah, vegan movie. You can take a lot of meaning away yeah. from it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely trying to disgust you with like meat. Uh, that's what Toby Hooper said about the movie. He said it's about meat. Well, that's awesome. Like, that's interesting. Yeah, it is yeah. what it's about. It's about meat. It's meat. about <laughs> yeah. It's You're about made meat. of fucking guts or yeah like he's, there's even that part where the um the disabled guy he's like he has a sausage in his mouth like a cigar and he's just holding it there <laughs> like a cigar almost it's very mm-hmm. very off yeah. and gross yeah yeah i love the look of the house at the end like it's so detailed and so like you said you can feel the smell like or the disgust mm-hmm. of them and that's mm-hmm. not something the other ones capture i don't think the houses are very bland in in the the next movies Mm-hmm. Or at least a few of them, like the third film especially. I noticed how like uh, just bland the house looked, and and here everything was like there was stuff covering every wall. There was like skin and or like bones, or, you know. It was really gross. Like I like what you said about the plotting. Like it feels very organic how the teenagers get to the house. You know, like they yeah. they pick up a hitchhiker. It doesn't work out. They they camp. They go to try find help because you know it's something went wrong. And then they just kind of stumble across this house. And it's just like, the more they try to fix their situation, the more it gets fucked up. And the yeah. more like, mm-hmm. it, it just don't delves into the horror. And then that's the, the point we're in the, the, you know, the dinner scene, like there's no escape. Like, how did we get here? You know? Well, they're it's, all it's kind really of unlikable writing. idiots too. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Well, fun. cause they're, they're, they're fodder to be killed by Leatherface. I mean, it's yeah. still a horror movie. That's what every horror movie is. It's like, why do you care about these fucking characters? Cause they, they're all going to die. Like who cares? Uh, but I, I think there's at least like some uniqueness. Like I really yeah. like the, I guess the fatter guy, I don't remember his name, but like, you know, the guy who acts kind of weird. Like he's just a really funny character. Like yeah, really annoying, like really serious. like, it's just, adds to the mood of the movie like the oppressive franklin? mood. yeah franklin the oppressive mood of the movie he's just like oh my god like who the fuck is this guy also starting your movie off with like th- this is a texas chainsaw massacre and then you start <laughs> the film as like, oh one of these guys is in a wheelchair <laughs> shit <laughs> like <laughs> fuck mm-hmm. <laughs> like this is not good <laughs> like that that brings a lot <laughs> yeah. of anxiety to just the situation like if you were to place yourself like in the mind of a character so many people think when they watch horror movies like here's what i would do here's how i would get away then it's like oh if i was a guy in the wheelchair i guess i die (laughs) what are you gonna do franklin was a very memorable character yeah and even in like the third i think the second or third friday the 13th movie they have like a wheelchair character i think that's like paying tribute to that definitely The whole intro, actually, even beyond just that opening text, like it has that kind of montage with the the photographs and the creepy close ups and weird sound. Yeah, Yeah. it's really off putting and creepy. I wonder how they got that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like clearly the character from like the hitchhiker guy with his camera and how it all comes into play. Yeah. Really creepy atmosphere building. I I feel Mm -hmm. like they really missed an opportunity and it's just a really subtle one. Because that that sound at the beginning of the camera flash, like it's so distinct and memorable and creepy and weird. Like I don't know if they used a shitty camera to get that sound, but but then the hitchhiker guy takes the picture there and it doesn't make that noise. I'm like, damn, that could have been like a real creepy uh, yeah, moment yeah. if you heard that <laughs> same noise, because then it would be like, oh, it's the same. Like I don't know. I don't know if it was even implied <laughs> that it was supposed to be the same. Like maybe I'm just misinterpreting yeah. it, but. That could yeah, have been like a moment, but I, that was yeah. just like a little bit of a missed opportunity. Mm-hmm. To to bring it back to like the sound overall, I think that it's really easy to see why this would stand out as such a visceral horror movie experience because chainsaws are fucking loud, right? And they're yeah. able to have these long chase scenes, like really long in ways where in most films it would feel like kind of, I would get kind of impatient. And just imagining how that would be done if the killer had a machete or a knife, right? It wouldn't mm-hmm. it wouldn't invoke the same fear response because it, w- with the chainsaw when I'm watching that shit happen, all I'm thinking is like, oh my god, like as he's getting closer, like she's looking forward and she would know that he's getting close. She might even think like she's done a little bit before it actually happens, you know? Like cuz it's so loud like mm-hmm. rrr, the entire time. Yeah, like, yeah. It's just it, it's like the f- it's like the second half of climax. It's just like holy shit, this is loud and terrifying, <laughs> it's startling. Yeah, like, yeah. It, well, there's a lot of overwhelming <laughs> sound. Yeah, even in the dinner scene, there's like a lot of yelling, and it's overwhelming you with mm-hmm. sound to kind of freak you out, yeah. or like startle you. Yeah, like yeah, I could like compare noises. like Michael Myers walking after. I think that's scary. Like Michael Myers walking after uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, whatever her name is, uh, yeah, yeah. Strode. Yeah, like that's scary to me. But like the the chainsaw, yeah, that's like much more startling and immediate. 
I, I hear people like they, they they say like creepy as if it's different than scary. Like they say like creepy is like quiet. Like I, I guess think, Michael yeah, Myers. I think that type. there's a bit of And then difference. scary is like Leatherface. Yeah, I like the Leatherface character a lot. I think he's um he's very unique from mm-hmm. other killers because he's not really he's not driven by like his own will really he's being manipulated by his family his family uses yeah. him to kill people and then they eat him <laughs> like that's what yeah. they do um and leatherface is like mentally disabled or like he's like you know he's a disabled person like he doesn't even probably realize what he's doing mm-hmm. and he's a very like just a very unique look very unique character very yeah, memorable yeah, like changes slasher. his costume depending on what he's doing which has yeah. some like weird creepy yeah he keeps changing like his face yeah, in yeah. some of the movies, he has like two different hairs on. Like he takes people's hair off and like puts it on his mm-hmm. head. Like, yeah. like it's really fucked up stuff. Like, but it, it, you know, it's a very memorable, interesting character mm-hmm. for sure. Like he's one of the best slashers. All the entire family is just great characters. The cook, the yeah. dude at the beginning who the cuts old his guy hand in the open. chair. Like they're they're <laughs> yeah. so memorable, and their performances are so great that like just having that dinner table scene with all of them together it's just you know it's a horror movie but that entire sequence is just acting right how many horror movies do you get where yeah. you can be terrified and engaged just by acting yeah. and that's it right that's all that's happening yeah it's dialogue it's like 12 angry men almost like trapped in that room <laughs> you're right mm-hmm. yeah and you know so many horror movies that exist are just like it's not about the acting it's it's about fucking stupid jump scares and characters being stupid and that's it, right? Yeah, like, like the kills or yeah, dumb like, jokes. Oh, this gore. movie just doesn't have that. It's still funny. It's still entertaining. It's just not conventional. It, it does everything in, a, in its own yeah. unique way, even from the look of the movie. There's no single uh, Adam Wingard horror movie where I could say the same. There's no Mike Flanagan horror <laughs> movie where I could say the same. I know people like those people, but... You know, I think there's a clear difference <laughs> in in mm-hmm. terms of what I guess what I'm willing mm-hmm. to yeah. sit through. I don't know. How do you feel about the characters? Like we talked about Franklin in general. Franklin's great. I found the most Franklin annoying person to be who we are <laughs> left with the longest, which I found funny. But it's also kind of a praise to the film that I was still able to feel like kind of scared for her and symp- sympathetic, empathetic um, to what she's going through and, and not just be like, hi, you know, like, hi, wish you would die sort of thing. Even, you know, yeah, she sure. was like super annoying. So, mm-hmm. so it is a testament to the movie. How it's presented. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. exactly. Mostly yeah. how it's presented. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To, to bring it back to another point that you were mentioning earlier, you really do feel is like if, if you were to take a, I've seen that ending shot of the, the film before. And that's always mm-hmm. stuck out to me as just like, wow, she does look like she's, been through an entire ordeal and i'm yeah. glad to say that you know despite how long the th- third act of this film is there is not only a, a progression in i guess you could say her makeup and her performance just like looking at her but it's also like it it's you can tell that she's going through hell pretty quickly into it also that's such a consistent thing throughout the film that helps the believability so much and when i watched the 2003 remake like Jessica Beale looks like she just got on set and they spritzed her with like a spray bottle. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, all made up. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. She has like these really nice jeans on. Like, yeah, she looks great. Like in every shot. Yeah. (laughs) I'm glad I rewatched that remake because it it really, there (laughs) was a moment while I was watching that remake when I noticed that and it clicked for me. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Like, she looks the, in the original film. She reminded me of like fucking Shelley Duvall in The Shining. Hopefully, she didn't go through as much trauma, but. You know, like it's it's like wow, you you look like you're actually going through through this. You know? Yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, it's missing in the others. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's when you compare it to that remake, like every choice is so bland in that one, and this one, yeah, it's just every choice in the 1974 one stands out. Mm-hmm. And it's very bold. Yeah, and I it works. I think it works. It's pretty clever how they've they structured the film because w- when you have that very obviously crazy guy at the beginning, uh, the hitchhiker doing that whole thing. Your attention mm-hmm. is so focused on him in terms of like, okay, that's like the killer. That's like the enemy, right? That when they pull up to the uh, barbecue place, you you kind of let your guard down a bit. Like in my head, I was thinking mm-hmm. like, I'm pretty sure I remember yeah. how the story goes. So they're like in on it or something. But I was also thinking like, they don't seem too threatening. 
Whereas in another horror movie, if we didn't, if this was like the first location they got to, and there wasn't a really obvious, really loud, you know, <laughs> threat before that point, then I might be thinking, oh, these guys are the killers. You know, you might be a bit more defensive knowing that you're in a horror movie and yeah. that you're meeting new characters, that, you know, in the middle of nowhere. But because there was that earlier, mm -hmm. very uh, overt threat, then it, yeah, it helps yeah, to definitely. trick the audience mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah, there's so much in the movie like that, like that whole thing. Like, who was that guy? What? There's so much mystery. There's so much you don't know. That, and that makes it scary, too. There's so much about this family that, that you don't That's know. That's what makes it scary. Yeah. Yeah. The implied like rituals and stuff they have in their house. is just so fucked up and confusing yeah. oh my and God. scary. Yeah. When they <laughs> when they when they got the grandpa with the hammer, hit her. That part was pretty funny. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It was still terrifying. There's always a, an element of comedy. There's always an element yeah, of comedy to this. Like, dark like it's humor, always yeah. kind of goofy. Yeah, but it just feels when you're in it, it's not like it feels real when you're in it. I don't know. It's just the look of it and yeah. the music and everything. Like we said. Yeah. Yeah. There, there is a lot of campiness to this film. Yeah. But it's really effective where it matters so much so that I, you know, the campiness is like really easy to overlook. Because, you know, despite it, you, so many other horror films that yeah. you could not describe as campy don't do anything nearly as impressive as a lot of the scenes in this film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's just, yeah. The tone just works. The hillbilly part of it makes it... Like, I like the comedic tone. I think mm -hmm. it needs that. Because then it's just kind of dull yeah. like, without that. <laughs> it's kind of chaotic in a way. Yeah. Oh, I can definitely. see people saying the movie's a mess, but it is entertaining. And especially when you watch the other ones. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, do you guys have anything more to say about this one? Just, I, I guess, yeah, the imagery of the, <laughs> the first girl death, just her being stuck on the meat hook. Like, holy shit! Yeah, that's like a holy really shit. great and like imagery. The, her boyfriend um, too. Her boyfriend got yeah. killed. That was a fucked up scene. And then he closes the door, and like that was a great edit. I thought. Yeah, yeah. slamming the. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I just, um, I just want to mention like the visual style of this film. Like there are some really well thought out shots in terms of how things are revealed. Like we already saw the blood on the van, but I love I love that it was on that spot of the door where it was covering it. And then because the door closes, then it kind of reveals it again. So the characters see it and it's like, oh, there's you know, they wouldn't have seen it coming out sort of thing. Like I, I like mm -hmm. I like that reveal. There's a lot of nice like I'm surprised that there were even like smooth camera movements in this film at all. I was expecting something like fucking sam raimi's first proof of concept within the woods <laughs> sort yeah, of thing yeah. you know mm -hmm. i was expecting sure. something like that level of filmmaking y yeah there's great shots in this yeah it's yeah. like lots of good dolly moves even though it yeah. has yeah, that, that eight under millimeter the camera or whatever amazing. really low mm -hmm. quality camera my biggest criticism would probably just be uh some of the editing choices got a little annoying at some parts of just like the there was one there was like scream 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 and each one like kind of cut itself off and then eyeball <laughs> polaroid noise scream it's like ah oh, man you don't need to do it's already so loud and chaotic like i don't know but otherwise yeah. I, I really enjoyed the film and that's all i have sure. to say about it and i would love to, to hear you talk about the sequels and i would love to talk about the fucking 2003 one with you yeah the remake yeah yeah because yeah, i don't know if i have any interest to see any of the other movies in this franchise because I, I don't know i want to keep this pure because this this one's just so good to me um not a bad my rating's choice. gone up in my head each time I've seen it. Yeah, mm. no, I'm curious to hear, especially about the, the the sequel, the direct sequel that the same director did. But um, if we're rounding off uh, like our scores for the original, mm. um, I, think, I think I've settled on a, a four star for this. I really, really do rate it a lot, and especially just how it's cascaded through horror. I, I, didn't, I didn't even know um, Ridley Scott apparently was inspired. Um, seeing this the year prior to making Alien, and that had a huge, huge influence on that. So it's, oh, wow. it's, it's in like so much, like, the, like, just creatively, it's, it's so responsible for such a great string of like movies following it, and yeah, it's very absolutely. original and creative. I, I really mm -hmm. rate it. Uh, I would give it five stars. I think it's like you said, it's one of the most influential and important horror movies ever made, and it's really scary. It really works. It's just mm -hmm. it's one of those few movies that actually gets to you and you remember uh, that it, just that sound, like you said, the camera flash sound. <laughs> like I remember that. <laughs> I remember yeah. him. I remember imagery from it. Just thinking about it right now. That's a yeah, you know, really that's a memorable. sign of a great memorable movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm giving this one a 7 out of 10. And it might get higher yeah. when I see it another time. This was my first experience. So thank you for recommending it, Ralph. Of course. The rest of them fucking suck. Or cool. <laughs> they're okay. <laughs> yeah, please. please uh, 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 the, second one, the second one's actually okay. I like the second one. Uh, it stars Dennis Ho Hooper or Hopper. Um, which is funny. We, we were talking about Mario Brothers earlier. Hopper. He's the bad guy in that. He's oh, Goomba, right. <laughs> King, whatever the fuck. Um, but he's in this, in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, he's like a detective or a cop or something. Dennis Hopper. He's, he's hunting down Leatherface in this one. And then like the other side plot is like this, I guess this girl at like a radio station is like reporting on Leatherface and Leatherface like kidnaps her and brings her, brings him to the, his lair or whatever. It's a very, it's much more goofy than the first one. Like it's a clearly, it's like Evil Dead 2. I think that's a good way to right. describe it. Like it's much more that, over the top. The it's trying to be goofy. funny. Like Dennis Hopper is really funny. Like okay. it's trying to go for that tone. The whole end of the yeah, movie the is just like Dennis Hopper fighting. Fucking like the poster <laughs> yeah. on IMDb. I'm like, what is this time? Yeah, I've, yeah. I've always been confused. When, when by I that. first saw it, I was very confused by it. I actually didn't like it, but I I get the goofiness of it now. I like it. I like the comedy. Um, it's an okay movie. I'd actually recommend it. The second one. Okay. It's just it's like okay. Evil Dead too. Uh, it's not as good as the first Texas Chainsaw, but whatever. The the third one is like when it gets really bad. Those are more interesting. That one stars um Vigo Mortensen. Ooh. If oh, you really? you guys know Vigo Mortensen, yes, he's I in, do. What's that, Mister <laughs> Fantastic? It the third one. Oh yeah, they all have like a bad subtitle. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre three. So in the sequel to Texas Chainsaw, Chainsaw is one word. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's so weird and that he's, the third one said they changed the third it one's called Leatherface -series. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Oh, okay. And then the fourth one has like a few different titles. When it started, it said like oh, The God. Return of Texas Chainsaw. There's so many it had another title. remakes and re there's a Leatherface in 2017 that I forgot about and didn't don't think I watched. But I yeah, just that forgot one that, that existed. Jesus, there's so many. But like oh, the, the third one's one. called Leatherface <laughs> 2. <laughs> like, they're both called Leatherface. Yeah. Uh, Texas Chainsaw 3, Leatherface. That one's just, it's just pretty shitty. Um, Vigo Morrison's like this guy, he works at like a gas station. And so teenagers come to the gas station, they, they fill up their pump or whatever. It's like a boyfriend and a girlfriend, I think. They're really boring fucking characters, like completely dull, like uninteresting. <laughs> and then like, I guess from there, Vigo Morrison gets like a shootout with some other guy who works at the gas station and they flee. And you know, from there they run into the woods, they meet this other guy and it's just really fucking bad. Like it's the same thing as the the, the first one. You know, they mm -hmm. get chased. Mm -hmm. the, there's no, they try to replicate the scene where the boyfriend, the girlfriend go in the house. They get killed. You know, yeah. it's not as effective. The the you know, there's the whole ending scene where she runs away, and she runs into an RV this time. And there's all this like really bad ADR, like uh, like this guy <laughs> driving the car, like Mr. Jenkins, I think his name is or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's like this woman. She's like, Mr. Jenkins for it. A leather face is chasing after us. It's like really bad ADR. It's like fucking terrible. Right. Like compared to the first one where that sound was just so visceral and excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's all I got to say about the third one. It just fucking sucks. Cool. Really boring characters. The fourth one's like, that's the one to talk about. The next generation. So have you guys? <laughs> yeah, the next I, generation. I have not, I have have you guys heard of? The next have generation. you heard of it at least? Like, I mean, it's I've, considered I've one of the worst seen the cover ever. of it maybe or something. I don't know. I've known it existed, but it's got really low ratings incredibly low ratings um renee zellweger yeah Matthew matthew mcconaughey, McConaughey. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It has, oh, so that this, sounds this, like this so series much even though it's like the campiest shittiest series it's like they got two oscar winners in it they got <laughs> they got matthew mcconaughey they got vigo mortensen like in it and you know they're good like matthew mcconaughey in this movie he's really over the top he has this fucking like yeah i'm adding this one to my leg. watch list fuck the other one you yeah, gotta watch the mechanical exhausting. there's like this mechanical leg in it i watched the director's 3.3 yeah. 3 out of 10 user rating this sounds hot awesome like with matthew mcconaughey <laughs> in it too and renee zellweger okay this yeah, is gotta be renee zellweger's like it, it starts so like it's like a completely <laughs> different movie at the beginning it's like a prom movie there this, these teenagers oh, awesome. drive prom <laughs> <laughs> and they run all, I don't know why they leave, but they leave, then they go in the woods and they get stuck. I don't, I forgot how. And then like, they get picked up by Matthew McConaughey. They get, they get brought to the house and like Matthew McConaughey just tortures, especially Renee Zellweger, he just tortures her, like making fun of her or whatever. And it, it's just so, it's so funny, like how Matthew McConaughey acts in this movie. Like, 
there's a part she's like pointing a gun at him because she she's like escaping and bathroom kennedy like takes the gun and fucking like shoves it in his own mouth he's like oh like, <laughs> dude, he opens his mouth. Uh, i'm laughing that's so funny yeah it's this is, this so is gonna be funny. this like, is gonna Bathroom be a movie Kai's, for me <laughs> yeah there's just so many scenes where we're like what the fuck am i even watching like nothing we kind of in it this like a scene he jumps onto a car there's like this goofy uh, he does it's like a, a meme can't wait it's like this noise he makes this sounds yeah. so wacky yeah, you've sold the, me. the fourth one is hysterical it's so yeah it, it, it's not good like i wouldn't rate it highly it's like a one star if you had to rate it the perfect uh, film but, yeah should i rate the other but ones too shit like the second one is like How a three star the, the 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 third one's like a two one star maybe sure. one star Okay. Yeah, the fourth one's a one star. So uh, the third and the fourth like, are equal in quality. It, uh, well, I guess technically, but like I find the fourth one funnier because okay. it's just because Matthew McConaughey. I, yeah. I like Viggo Mortensen. Like he's enjoyable. okay in the movie, but he's not as campy as like Matthew McConaughey in the fourth one. He goes all out. Okay. I think McConaughey actually said it's one of his weakest performances. Great. Which <laughs> I guess it's fair, but you know he's like he's like a Dallas Buyers Club and like True Detective, like real <laughs> acting roles, and just to see him in this, like fucking acting like an idiot, like mm -hmm. he's beating the, he's beating up women, like he's yelling like a madman, like it's so bizarre to see him in that, in that role. Yeah, the poster is even like campy schlock like you could mm -hmm. totally tell um yeah i would recommend that one yeah so, so let's that, go to the remake yeah that's let's, the next because you've the seen timeline. that right yeah so here's my here's why i decided to rewatch the 2003 film is because i was i guess 13 when i would have watched it because that would have been the home video release and i watched it by myself at my like granny's place and it scared me and i remember being scared by it and it was like in the daytime too but i remember i was like i was like looking at the window to my right i'm like oh is, is something gonna come out of the window so you know it was like a scary experience mm -hmm. for me and what i love about having rewatched it is that i'm able to pinpoint filmmaking qualities that i was not aware of when i was 13 that really stick out to me now like i mentioned <laughs> earlier the soundtrack just being shit because i that did not mm -hmm. influence me at all when i was 13 i was just able to be like oh yeah this you know, just watching the movie sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another thing that really stands out to me now, there's so many fucking cuts in this movie. There's a cut every like two yeah. seconds and like it's the just editing so is terrible. Weird. Really? Yeah. The cinematography yeah. is too. It's and it's terrible. so embarrassing because you can tell that they're terrible. like trying to recreate certain sequences from the original film, but it's just like cut, cut. And it's just like, feels like a trailer. Also, Michael Bay produced this. I don't know if, mm -hmm. if anyone was It's one of those it. Michael Bay produced... <laughs> That's right. Like, he, he produces a lot of those like slasher remakes, like Friday the 13th, Nightmare oh, yeah. on Elm Street. That's like, that's maybe the worst one. Nightmare on Elm Street, the remake, I didn't even watch terrible. it. Fucking it's Robert awful. England is still alive, so okay? Bad. Fuck you. You're <laughs> replacing him. Yeah. I like Jack Earl Haley, too, but I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah, what a stupid decision. But, yeah, this must have been that era where these remakes actually weren't popular. Like, they were trying to get them off the ground. Like, They're so bad. Totally yeah. Cool they try to make it believable. Weird. Like, the, the yeah. attempt is to make it more realistic by, I guess, making it all the cinematography brown and by just making the characters really bland and, like, just having all this, like, handheld camera shit and, like, quick cutting and it fucking sucks it just looks mm -hmm. bland and it looks like an early 2000s like shitty horror movie it, like and then it's got good actors in it but they're not really given anything like lee ermy he's like he's the guy in the full model jacket the drill sergeant like he's an excellent actor and in this he's like you know he's okay but he doesn't he's not given much and jessica beale is too pretty like she doesn't look beat yeah. up like you said like she's getting fucking chased by a guy with a chainsaw she should be like dirtied and like and there's just so many like conventional horror movie fucking things. Like she hot wires a car. Like how does twice. this woman know how to there's hot wire a car? There's two car hot wirings <laughs> in yeah, this like, movie. Like, what? It like, happens twice. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Like when she grew up in Baltimore, like with it no doesn't tools, make sense. <laughs> just with her fingers. Yeah. It's, it doesn't make any sense. It's just like shitty writing, and like it's just about having those horror movie moments with the jump scares and the scene. Like, oh, is she gonna start the car before Lee Army gets to her? Or, and it's just that it's very bland and it's not what the first one was and i don't even think it wants to be it just wants to make money um, and it did so. <laughs> it very much did oh, it, it, it it was like a hundred oh, million dollar yeah 107 million dollar at the box office on a 9.5 million dollar budget so <laughs> yeah which is bank great. Yeah. cheap as shit yeah they made a prequel after it how's the runtime compared to the original because we didn't really it's mention longer. that it's really short the original yeah the um, shorter, which yeah. is nice it's like an hour 20 yeah it's this like one's like 15 minutes remake. longer mm -hmm. doesn't need to be mm. 
stuff. Yeah, they had. there's a lot of weird decisions. <laughs> like the uh, ending's not as memorable. Like we talked about the ending of the first one. It's like very memorable scene. This this one's like whatever. <laughs> so like when when I was saying earlier with the uh, original film, how there's a very clear and obvious threat from the crazy guy, and then he runs away, and then your guard is let down from the other characters you meet at the gas station or the shop or whatever. Mm-hmm. That does not happen in this film because instead of the crazy guy, they get just a girl wandering the streets, and it's obvious that she escaped from the thing, right? And so it's like, oh, this is a victim. So now oh, okay. your attention is drawn outwardly instead of focused on just one thing. It's like, oh, well, who who else is the villain here? And also, so she gets in the back of their car and she's like drugged or tired or something. And <laughs> she's like, oh, don't take me back there. You're going the wrong way. Just like really quietly. They're like, what's, what's wrong? And she pulls a, a revolver out of her pussy I'm not kidding. <laughs> like, well, from between her legs. Maybe maybe it wasn't all the way back there. I don't know. But it is kind of funny. From b- between her legs. And it she's she immediately just blows her fucking brains out in the back of their car. And now the plot is, well, we got a dead girl in the back of the car, like Pulp Fiction, except trying to be more serious. And uh, <laughs> so they're trying to figure out, like, oh, but we were trying to smuggle weed. So now we got to get rid of the pinata fold of weed because now we got to involve oh the goodness. cops about the dead body. And so they find the sheriff who's played by the uh, the guy from no- Full Metal Jacket, the sergeant. Yeah, yeah, Leon. Yeah, yeah Leon. Yeah, and he's yeah. pretty funny in the movie. But yeah, and then they, yeah, it's just, there's there's a lot of, there's a lot of parts where it's like, they're trying to recreate moments or sequences. And I'm just like, damn, you really don't understand why that worked so well. Like this, the sliding metal door part, it's such a close shot. Mm-hmm that it really doesn't have the same impact as it did in the 70s film. Because in the 70s film, you have you have a, a wide enough shot where you're able to see the door in the center of the frame and the house, the rest of the interior of the house around it. So that when the metal part of the door comes out, you're like, holy shit, that's, that doesn't belong there. Like, is there's like a dungeon or something in there. But when it happens in the mm-hmm. 2003 mm-hmm. film, it's just like such a close shot that all you see is this metal door. And it really loses the impact. Really loses yeah, the impact so for much. sure. It's um, like they didn't want to have an impact. It's like they wanted to make the I think most... they just didn't understand. Maybe they want to... I don't think they wanted to scare people too much, but that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't take it too far. Yeah. yeah just they're like, like, no, we can't be too much. I mean, and that goes along with just like those early 2000s. They were so tame, those movies. And, yeah. And, mm. You know, horror movies in the 70s and 80s were much more visceral and you know, those, those filmmakers just did whatever they wanted. <laughs> they made really scary yeah. stuff in, in, that, yeah. in that way. There's different uh, trends that happen, you know. Early two thousands mm-hmm. is when the saw uh, torture porn stuff was going on, like two thousand four, yeah, like true. the next year. That was the big trend. So it really depends. But I, I don't know. It for a film like this, it's just like man, it it becomes so apparent. Like the more cuts there are in the film, the less of a vision you have to have because you can always just figure it out in post, and somebody else is going to, you know, just like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, sure. It's it's so much less in all cases, purposeful. But in this case, yeah, yeah, not in all cases. In this, but... it didn't feel purposeful at all. Yeah, yeah not exactly. Pur- this, oh my god, that's the perfect way to describe it. It's not purposeful. <laughs> it's just a remake. It's just a bland remake. Hearing you guys describe this movie actually reminded me that I, I have seen it. Actually, like I've oh. seen it. It's just really boring and generic. I just forgot I'd seen it. <laughs> oh, that's that great. Describing One of like those. the intro and stuff. I have definitely yeah. seen it. Yeah, maybe even multiple times. But <laughs> yeah, not good. I want to uh, I want to play a sound effect <laughs> for you. <laughs> There's a lot of these in the a film. Sound effect. That was just oh, from my man. phone. That was, and I found yeah, that like by stop. searching Hell's Kitchen sound effect. And because I've seen so much of that Gordon Ramsay oh, shit, shit now, yeah. like Hell's watching Kitchen. the film now, when it was done unironically, oh. I'm like, oh my God, Hell's Kitchen. So like That's every really fucking funny. five minutes, I was like, holy shit, this is so funny. It's like ruined it unintentionally because mm. it used to be like a serious kind of sound effect. Yeah. But now it's just like you can't do it unironically anymore because oh, reality mm. television has just fucking ruined it <laughs> we've warped it it's not like a great sound effect in the first place but it's just so funny that i was just thinking of hell's kitchen the entire time oh my god the the outdoor lighting scenes in this film it just mm-hmm. the, the outdoor scenes yeah, lighting, they do I mean. them it was so yeah, weird the moon is the moon is very bright <laughs> well no there's Apparently. like there's like two <laughs> or three different 
situations where they're outside and I'm like, this looks so weirdly off and it was in a different way. Like, okay, clearly this is really bright middle of the day shit and you're pretending like there's some overcast in post and you're like dimming it down, but you can like, there's something really off about like the shadows and how the yeah, light's hitting the characters and the color. And it's just like, it's so weird. It's so bizarre mm -hmm. that they just like, fuck it. I don't know, laziness or just unlucky with they, the they weather. They did day for know. night. Day for night, which is usually what they do in like cheap yeah. Bigfoot shows, but not in a mm -hmm. feature film. <laughs> $9.5 million budget, I guess. Yeah, but it's cheap as shit Jessica tonight. Biel most of that went to ate, the, the actors. Ate up the yeah. majority of it. <laughs> yeah, Jessica Biel, Lee Army, <laughs> yeah. those guys. So in the original 70s film, and I guess tell me whether or not this happened in any of the sequels, Ralph. But if I remember correctly, in the 70s film, they never showed Leatherface's real face, right? No. No. Did that happen in any of the sequels? Because no. that happens in this any 2003 no. movie. I don't think so. Wow. I don't think so. Yeah, they did this really stupid yeah. reveal where it was like, look, he's deformed and missing a nose. <laughs> like, I don't know. You're kind of <laughs> yeah, ruining the mystique, matter? though. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Exactly. It ruins the mystery. Yeah. Like, that's part of the horror. The more movies you make about something, inherently it gets less scary because you learn more about it. It's yeah. Like, uh, Doing a real yeah, origin explain. story. <laughs> like, we know Leatherface now. We've seen him a million times. It's not scary yeah. anymore. I never actually uh, watched the, the prequel that they consistent. made. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the, be the beginning. I wonder how shitty that is. Oh, yeah, the beginning. Yeah, probably really bad. Um, I think I have seen that. Oh, yeah? Who directed it? It was another produced by Michael Bay one, but I think it's a different director. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I have seen it. I didn't rewatch it for this. Um, yeah, different director, Jonathan Lieb Liebsman. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of the same cast. Like he Lee directed in Darkness it Falls yeah. <laughs> in 2003. Okay. I, I watched that horror movie. He directed Rings, the sequel to The Ring, but was bad. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, no. Wow, Battle Los Always Angeles. That Halo TV show. Oh great! Uh, do Clash little of Titans, right? Or uncredited of director of reshoots, apparently. Oh, did he do Wrath of the Titans? I I, just, I feel like I remember that. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Wrath yeah. of the Titans. That's right. Apparently, yeah. Rings is listed as a short film. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> it was on the S extra disc with the re-release of the Ring on the DVD, so it wasn't okay. the Ring two. Yeah, where was I? I was talking about dumb shit. <laughs> the so lighting the was so no. weird. It's just so much of this film is just like they made it in post, but not in a good way, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Mm. Oh, God. Yeah, I remember. It's it a very say. studio movie. Fucking. That's, that's like, you know, the whole movie, the whole point of the original movie is that it isn't that. Like, it's so mm -hmm. against the grain. Yeah, you're and, right. You know, it's just to see a complete remake of it. That's yeah. like completely bland. You yeah, don't want to see something that's like sanitized when you think Texas Chainsaw. It's Massacre. very sanitized. See, like, yeah. Raw. Raw mate. Uh, there's I, I a like really, <laughs> really funny shot where Leatherface is wearing uh, Jessica Biel's yeah. character's boyfriend's face, <laughs> and it's like kind of CG and bad. And it's just, it's just mm -hmm. a really funny reveal. It's like, why? There's also a part it, when they're in the car at the beginning. They change a lot of the dialogue and make it just so much more trashy. Like, it's all about drugs at the beginning. They're not having, like, any interesting conversations. There's just, like, <laughs> weed, Mexico partying. And then Jessica Biel's like, I thought you were, like, you know, maybe you could put a ring on my finger because I were boyfriend-girlfriend characters. He's like, yeah, as if. And then later when the boyfriend character so. gets killed... Uh, Leatherface is like digging through his pockets and finds a, a, a wedding engagement ring. <laughs> it's just like, why do we need that? Like, we need the. Oh, he was going to marry her the, yeah, for real. Like, yeah. why does that matter? This character that in died, you're supposed to care about him. Yeah, and she never finds it. I thought for sure when she was like in the basement, she was going to find the ring. So it really leads nowhere. It's just for the audience and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Fuck. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah the, uh, sure. the, the. So they have the one other friend up on the meat hook or whatever uh his legs cut off and jessica beale he's like over top of a piano and she's like oh i need to help g get you down from there and she can't because she's weak or something and then he's just mm -hmm. she grabs a knife and he's like do it and that's all they that's the only communication that they have it's just do it just implied <laughs> like oh i guess jessica beale should put him out of his misery she stabs him in the gut <laughs> once and then he immediately <laughs> dies it's like that's the worst place to stand that's that's like a slow and painful death agonizingly painful mm -hmm. death that you're just gonna put yeah, it through the but the movie pretends otherwise like fuck cut it i don't know like maybe just cut him in the arm and have him bleed out if he can't reach his like throat or his heart just shoot him in the head 
Just yeah, saying. that was really funny. And the music during that scene, too. It was like so clearly trying to enforce this like this is so sad this is so sad that he's <laughs> she's killing yeah. him right now it's like oh my god fuck mm -hmm. so much wrong with so this formulaic movie. but mm -hmm. it was very funny and i'm glad i watched it it was like one of those really like oh this is trash and i'm enjoying it because it's yeah. so bad they're all thing. trash i think you really like the fourth one I'm, that one's really trashy and funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's that's what you're looking for more so than this like this is kind of bland i thought yeah. i didn't hate the movie I don't hate it as much as the Nightmare on Elm Street remake or like mm -hmm. the Friday the 13th one. It's just not, yeah, it's really not good. It's bland, brown. Yeah. It's like every Michael Bay remake, it's brown, whatever, <laughs> like bland. <laughs> like yeah. everything's brown, everything's yeah, yellow. Right. Like it just doesn't look interesting. It's, ugh, it's just ugly. What do you think lame. about that, uh, that one shot that went through the girl's head? I that was a pretty cool <laughs> uh, shot. That, that was cool. Yeah. yeah. It's like the one shot in the movie that doesn't <laughs> sure. look awful. What do you mean it goes through her head? Yeah, so the girl blows her brains out and the camera shows the characters in the car reacting and it it goes back, it dollies back through the uh, oh, okay. head wound and then the head the wound. like f f tilts back as it keeps going out through the car and it's like, oh, there's that involved some planning. That involved some coordination yeah. there. Yeah, It's kind of cool. Yeah. That was like the money shot. Yeah. And then the rest of the movie looks like shit. <laughs> and it's just <laughs> too many guys. Shot. You'd think for a movie that like actively understands that they're putting effort into a specific shot where the entire appeal of the shot is that it's one unbroken shot. You'd think that the same people making that shot would understand how shitty the movie looks when there's a cut every few seconds for the rest of it, right? You'd have to have an understanding yeah, of how shitty that is in order to think that that just, shot looks cool. It's just the cool, system. It's like, right? Yeah, like the editor is in charge of that shit. Yeah, like, I guess. The film crew has no control yeah, over that stuff. They don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know how it's going to turn out. It's Yeah, it sucks. It's very bland editing. Oh, you yeah. know what also really fucking sucks? Studio conventional. So every, every time that um, Leatherface is destroying something with a chainsaw in the 1970s film, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're just actually cutting something open with a chainsaw. That door just fucking meh, meh, like making that yeah. X symbol yeah. and then like tearing it apart. There's so many parts in this film where they have the same concept of like, okay, there's a door behind it is Leatherface is going to get through it with a chainsaw where it's just like they just rigged a fucking thing to explode. Like he, he didn't cut through it with a chainsaw. He like poked it and then some foam that looked like a door just exploded in one hit. Like you could <laughs> poke it and just boom. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just like, damn, that That's doesn't boring. feel real. Yeah. 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 And I never would have noticed that when I was 13. I never would have noticed how fucking <laughs> stupid it was that like, Leatherface teleports in front of the guy in the in the uh, the sheets scene where he's being chased through the laundry or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that didn't make like, sense mm -hmm. either. Yeah, when right. I was younger, I was like, that actually scared me because I guess part I, I remember the thought process of like, yeah, it's scary that he could teleport in front of me. But now as an adult, I'm like, well, if I'm this isn't a supernatural film, so you're kind of ruining the believability there has to be some yeah, Leatherface isn't a ghost yeah it's just a guy it's like a when i was 13 guy. it scared me <laughs> yeah 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 so much bullshit yeah they don't they don't make Leatherface. Leatherface isn't writing this he's too uh he's too mean he's too like too much like michael myers or someone like that like he's yeah Leatherface is a sad character like he's just he's used by like other people <laughs> and he's just you know like, there's nothing he could do he's just he's got the guy he's got the chainsaw or whatever Mm -hmm. There were some just a prank bro jump scares. Those are always fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, my favorite. Where one of the characters is just an asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whoa, just my like arm. Like, that. like who does that? <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop hanging out with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a shitty horror movie. Yeah, very bland. But it was very funny. I, I would recommend it. About it. It's really funny. <laughs> I'm glad you found it funny. Yeah. I was enjoying it. I like looking at Jessica Biel. She's very oh. pretty. <laughs> yeah, I guess one last thing to mention. How do you feel about uh, them clearly it, like injecting this Blair Witch shit at the beginning and end of the movie for no reason? <laughs> like, just like, oh, we're gonna have a found footage of the the cops that are that checked oh, yeah. out the crime scene. And what's weird about that yeah. is in the opening they say like thirty years ago, right? But then the entire movie plays, and it never once feels like a 70s period piece. Never once does it feel like this is in the 70s. Like It feels like mm -hmm. so weirdly modernistic. Yeah, absolutely. It and then at like the end of the movie, movie, it's like clear because they, they do the 
close-up shot of the male character being dragged down the stairs he's like oh he left those scratch prints right like that's so clear and then at the end of the movie mm-hmm. they're like investigating in the Blair Witch thing or whatever and I'm like wow that whole thing was supposed to be in the 70s it never once felt like it it never mm-hmm. once it, it felt like mm-hmm. a 2003 characters and feel movie the entire time like holy yeah. shit that's a bad job if you're trying to make a period piece damn Three out of ten. It was a hard. lot of fun. <laughs> I enjoyed it. <laughs> Three out of ten. Yeah. yeah, I'd give it one star or one and a half. I actually give it the same thing. One and a half. Yeah, Perfect. Out of five. Um, it's terrible, but it's you know, it's just like a bland remake. I won't even say it's terrible. It's just a bland remake. And to yeah. me, that's terrible, but <laughs> it, it was a bit nostalgic for <laughs> you me. Know, it's other people of just sure. shitty two thousand yeah, two thousand and three horror movie bland nonsense. First yeah. one's definitely better. Yeah. If you want like I a funny bad experience, I'd say watch watch the second one or watch the fourth one. Like those are funny bad movies. Mm-hmm. This is kind of like, eh. Um, yeah. Like you said, what the the film stuff at the end that was really thrown in. Yeah, they're trying way too hard. That's why I said they're trying too hard to make him scary, like Leatherface. Like they have the freeze frames on him. It's not. That's not the point. <laughs> you know, this. I, I felt bad for Leatherface. I I, I thought he's more just a big baby. Way. Yeah, I like him as just a big baby because that's what he is. Yeah, a big <laughs> child. Uh, but at the same time, that's scary because when you direct the child in a direction, he's just like, "Okay, I'll fucking mm-hmm. kill this woman. I don't even mm-hmm. know what I'm doing." <laughs> like that's scary. That is scary. Yeah. You broke the door. <laughs> that was a good scene. <laughs> yeah, they they like yell at him. Like yeah. they treat Leatherface like shit. His family. <laughs> yeah, it's so much more interesting. Um, so there's another one after Texas Chainsaw. I think 3D. Yeah, which ones? That's have with you Alexander Daddario. Or left here. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, Texas Chainsaw 3D. That's the next one. It's 2013. Well, the beginning is the 2006 Texas. The prequel to oh God, the God. Michael Bay. Do you remember anything about that? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I don't just remember ima- anything about I, it. I didn't see it. And then, yeah, Texas Chainsaw yeah. 3D. It's just literally called Texas Chainsaw 3D 2013. Which is a bad title. Did you watch yeah. it? Yeah. It's oh. just shit. It's like a very bland <laughs> horror movie. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, they've got like... Yeah, it's just bad. I don't even. It's not yeah. even if you don't want to talk about it, don't feel pressured. It's just bad. And then there's Leatherface. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. In 2017. Yeah, that one. That I didn't see. I heard that one was bad too. Yeah, I think. Uh, one I'm, of the I'm IMDb curious. Ratings on that. Let's see. Really low, but you know, I, I'm. I, I like. I like the tone. I, I just. I would watch more of these. Yeah, the goofy tone. I don't mind that. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2021 apparently, produced by uh, Fede. Alvarez, who did uh, fucking Evil Dead remake and what was that F- Crocodile movie? Crocodile Dundee. Was that did he? No, Alexandra <laughs> Aja did that. Never mind. Um, let's see what else Fede has done. If however I pr- pronounce his name, he directed Don't Breathe and The Girl in the Spider's Web. Are you talking about and Lake so Placid when you said the crocodile movie? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was talking about the newer yeah, one that Alexandra movie. Aja made, oh, okay. where it was like Sorry. Florida flooding, <laughs> I think and like, like every plastic. character that died was somebody that literally just showed up just to die mm-hmm. in that one scene. <laughs> you should watch Lake Placid. It's like it's like Jaws except with a crocodile. Oh, I've seen it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah that would be very Lake nostalgic for me. Actually, <laughs> it's just with a crocodile. If you ever want to recommend it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I, could, I could definitely watch That's that. That's definitely on my alley to recommend. I remember the ending. I won't say it. There's like five sequels too. Oh shit! Yeah, so Fede Alvarez is producing this new. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and the director, David Blue Garcia, has done nothing. He's directed a movie called Teano, which nobody watched. (laughs) Okay. All right. I guess there will be another Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Can't wait. And I haven't seen any ads for it. Yeah, that's weird. Is it being released this year? I don't even know. (laughs) Yeah, It's weird. I haven't heard anything about it. Oh, my God. On IMDb, it just says... 2021 in parentheses internet maybe that's not accurate <laughs> maybe it's a web show no i'm usually they say that for the home video release now mm. like itunes and stuff i'd say like the film the series oh, as a whole to... it lacks it lacks consistency it's not about like a continuing story or continuing characters it's just about like if you yeah. like that tone just watch yeah. it and each one is no like one completely different as good as the yeah first sure one. <laughs> that too mm-hmm. but it's just yeah each one is completely different and you know you see what you get <laughs> they'll, they'll have Leatherface in it, that's for sure. They also always have the old guy. The old guy's in every one. The, you know, he stands still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, the the new one is 
an alternate continuity to the original film. So I guess a direct sequel to the 70s one. Oh, yeah. I feel like they did that <laughs> yeah. three times. Pretending like the other sequels need. didn't happen, mm-hmm. basically. Mm-hmm. That's what they did with Halloween. That's yeah, what we need. That's what we need. <laughs> cool. Thanks for letting me recommend that. Yeah, no, that was a real cool one. Thank you. Let's do some questions then from the Southern Cast subreddit. There's a suggestion thread there where you can ask whatever question you'd like for us to answer. CC Buddy R. Ryder is going to get us going. For Ralph slash Alex, who's your favorite Disney villain? For Adam, who's your second favorite Disney villain? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. hey, Scar is pretty good. Disney specifically. Yeah, they're known for their kind of villains, aren't they? Like For me, for me, Hades from Hercules How, stands that's out it. as one of the best. You got it. He's fucking amazing yeah. as far as like an animated character sure. design is concerned. Like when he yeah. gets angry, the blue flames turn red. He's so expressive. The yeah. the voice acting and everything, mm-hmm. and the design as well with the the artist who did like the the Pink Floyd's The Wall stuff. Oh, did cool. the, yeah. The art direction for that movie, so it's got like a kind of weird tinge for a Disney movie. Yeah. A bit more creepy. Not gonna I'm lie, really, checks really, really a couple like of the Hades. same boxes for me. Was, uh, <laughs> what, what are those like the voice and the yeah just like i don't know what, what the, i like the kind of like i guess they both got like yellow eyes <laughs> just mm, kind of yeah. like evil smile kind of in the like sarcastic personality sort of thing yeah suave i haven't seen the movie in a long time <laughs> mm. the voice is not as good for me obviously sure i looked up a list of like disney villains yeah, they, they counted like there's some weird ones yeah. you won't count like sid from toy story <laughs> like that's a villain i guess technically <laughs> yeah yeah if you want to throw pixar in there the fucking what's the lizard from monsters inc oh randall that, randall. That randall's disney? good randall's amazing Sure. Sure. Okay. Does Marvel then, count as Disney? I like Loki. And I guess I, I would say if him or like, Hades. like Disney classic animated. <laughs> like I would say Captain Hook for me. Mm-hmm. I think that's my yeah, favorite. That's a good one too. Yeah, Captain Hook is probably Ursula is very memorable. Yeah, Little Mermaid. Yeah, just to mention a girl. Yeah, <laughs> I know some people probably want me to say Shere Khan or something, but nope. <laughs> Voice sounds too okay. old. Sorry. Oogie Boogie from uh, that's a good villain. Nightmare on all, uh, what is it? Yeah, actually, Nightmare Oogie Boogie is a real good one. I'm sorry. I like um, I can't remember his name in The Incredibles. The like kid, um, the, the Alvin and the Chipmunks guy. Syndrome. Syndrome. That's his name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Syndrome's great. Yeah, I like. I think that's a cool villain. <laughs> yeah, Syndrome is good. Yeah. All right. I couldn't pick one, but you got a couple. So. Uh, Darth Vader. <laughs> That's the, like I mean, it wasn't a. I, I do, do, not back then. I guess, yeah. I guess it's a Disney. Kylo movie. Ren. Trying to stretch it. Yeah, Kylo Ren's okay. It's definitely the best part of those new ones for sure. Like, not even a doubt. Oh, Kylo Ren. Darth Maul. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. His cool lightsaber and no character aside from Count that. Dooku. That's my choice. He had a cool lightsaber too. It had like a little, looked like a comma. You know, like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> most no, lightsabers no, exactly. are straight his was toy. like his was kind of slanted like flaccid <laughs> great great writing George Lucas um, I guess seeing as this will be coming out in October we should have a horror related one uh, M. Night needs an Oscar left this saying what's the best popcorn horror film a movie that delivers on scares and tension but doesn't necessarily push the envelope with filmmaking okay See, what flashes in my head is like the first saw. I think it's perfect for this kind of thing. It's mm-hmm. quick, snappy. It's, it's, it's sure. before it turned into like gore porn. I actually, actually gave a shit about scaring you a little bit, building up an atmosphere. Sure. Adam, you recommended uh, Drag Me to Hell. I really like that. I, yeah. I count that as one of those. It's like gra- not yeah, groundbreaking, but it's really entertaining, great horror yeah, movie. Yeah, that's a really good one. Yeah. And, you know, not rated R, which is unconventional too. You know... If I were to say popcorn horror, there's I'm I might be pushing the genres a little bit, but one cut of the dead is fucking awesome. Okay. There's my answer. And if you're gonna watch it, anybody who's listening, do not search up anything about it. All you need to know is that it is a single take zombie film where you're supposed to keep watching after the credits. And that's all I'm gonna say. Neither of you have watched that, have you? Interesting. No. I will watch it. Okay. No, not yet. Noted. Yeah, a lot of those great horror movies were like game changers. You know. Yeah, that's. It's hard I'm to pick one. Trying to focus like, more on the popcorn like Sansa Lambs, like 
that's games like American Psycho, Alien, The Thing. Like those are all, those all have even Shaun of the Dead. Like that had a huge impact. I feel Scream. <laughs> like these are all great. Like I can't, I can't name one. It's like what about like just fun? It it follows or something along those lines. Sure, it follows. It's fairly Maybe, unique um, for its time. But it's you know, not... don't breathe. Don't breathe is that's a good a, one. Yeah, I feel I like mean, there's some memorable. That's like what a conventional horror movie should be like. It's not great, but at yeah. least it's yeah, like it, it hits all the check marks and it's entertaining, right? Yeah, there's some there's some memorable parts about Did it. Did you see they've like made a sequel? Like Don't Breathe Two like came out like the other week or something. Yeah, I didn't watch Which it. Which one? Weird one to make a, a sequel, sequel to, to Don't Breathe. I read apparently. the premise. <laughs> oh yeah, I yeah, wanted to see that. It's about the blind guy like going to save a girl or something. Like a weird premise. I don't know what it's yeah, like. Yeah, no the idea. the bad guy's like the good guy in that in the second one. Yeah, the I guess that's guy. the spin. Yeah, that's like the spin. He has got like rescue someone. <laughs> um, weird considering that what he gets up to in that first one. But you know the the collector and the collection. I just thought of that. Oh those yeah, are, yeah. Those are those fun. Are popcorn. This is like oh, a bunch of yeah. like killing. <laughs> this is like killing. I forgot that those <laughs> exist. Fun. Goofy as fuck. Those are really fun. Yeah. I remember Adam. You took a picture of like your brother or something, and he's got like the collector mask on or whatever. It like, <laughs> looked like. Oh, I, don't <laughs> I remember, remember tweeting that at you. That was really funny. <laughs> I, was I really haven't funny. thought about the collector in so many years, man. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. I like the collection and the collector. Those are very campy. Fuck like, yeah. Those aren't like high art, but they're Cube? funny. Cube mm -hmm. is great. Holy shit. Yeah. I yeah. love Cube. A lot like, of fun. Yeah, you know, not uh, not like uh not like I don't know, the exorcist, but <laughs> it's up <Yeah>. there. <laughs> Canadian <laughs> you know? movie. It's it's like a good it's a really good concept and it's it makes great use of like that one set. Like the whole thing Perfect, is set yeah. in that one fucking set. And it's like it's how they mm -hmm. use the lighting and how they use the 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 actors and the characters really yeah. that, that makes it work. Like that's a great horror movie for sure. Yeah, they awesome make great use of those limitations. Yeah. Next question. Proud Asparagus, nineteen thirty-four has has a sad one for me. So, do you guys think Ralph's going to win the bet? Sony and Andy Serkis have been saying it will happen for a while now, and Tom Hardy is wearing a Far From Home hat in a photo so he could be in that film. We'll cross that bridge um, when so we this come is to referencing, it. Uh, you guys owe yeah, me money, I think. It's, Some, it's okay, if you want to see a conclusion to this bet, just you find that original clip of the exact words we used and just hang yeah, on to it, and then when two, it happens, of like fucking, and it, when it like happens, two years we will ago. settle. Right? Yeah, it's ages I, ago now. Yeah, we have to remember. I... I I don't care about it, so I keep forgetting what the specifics of the bet are. So if you listening, no, I think I'm want to just here. hang on to that clip for a while, then sure. <laughs> Can someone just find it for me? One of our fucking like, how many listeners do we have? Will somebody just fucking post. <laughs> we have it at least so three listeners. Watch it. I think someone did I'm, that already. I didn't even from, watch it. In my mind, it, it sits as me saying that Venom, Tom Hardy Venom, will never be in the MCU, and if he's in this new Spider Man, then I'm wrong, and I and I'd lose the bet. <laughs> Yeah, Man, it's I know. Like, all signs like, when I watch, like, <laughs> listen to Spill or whatever, like back in the day or whatever, yeah, I, yeah. I memorized everything. Like, I know every fucking episode <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah. So if one of our listeners can't fucking go back to that clip, then you know maybe it's we should just end there. this podcast. I'll find it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> find yeah, it. I'm not feeling good about it. I think I'm I think I'm screwed this time. I could find like <laughs> the exact clip of like Corey saying something like it's Spill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I memorized everything. Uh, Dung Porn Alt is an interesting one. Interesting name. <laughs> yeah. Out of all the top movie lists, Sound and Sight, AFI's Top 100, 1001 Movies, You Must See Before You Die, IMDb slash Letterbox, Top Lists, etc. Which one do you think is most accurate on listening, sorry, on listing what should be considered the best movies of all time? Fuck, do you have any of these huh. open? <laughs> what are these again? Um, I actually have the 1001 Movies like book. Um, yeah, yeah. There's a new one coming out with like a uh, Brad Pitt on the cover as Cliff Booth. Yeah, I, I ordered it. Yeah, <laughs> I'd say that one's like pretty, pretty damn good to be honest. It's pretty expensive. I mean, it would have um, to cover a lot if there's one thousand and one. Yeah, right? true. Um, mm -hmm. That's a lot. A lot of the recommended movies on Sardonicus that often are in that in that book too. Um, and I, I used to would have like point at the IMDb list like once upon a time a few decades ago, well a decade ago it was okay. It was a good like sort of starting point to jump into some of the biggest, more important movies you might mm -hmm. know. But it, mm -hmm. we mention it again and again. It's getting more and more diluted as more new movies come out and the scores all kind of fuck it up and the ratings of everything. But yeah. maybe Letterboxd I suppose is a bit more consistent for that stuff. 
there's still a lot of movies I would need to see before I would ever feel confident about making that kind there's of still a lot of letterbox yeah. movies that have weird ratings. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. What did you guys do when you were first like trying to find what you wanted to see? You know, because it's like a lot of people hmm. don't. You mentioned it earlier, I think. Like, I had a Microsoft Word document <laughs> on mm. my computer in like 2006 that I would just add things to, but I didn't take. I didn't get like a whole like list from someone else and add add everything to it. It was just slowly, you know, someone would recommend something and I'd add it to it or I'd see a trailer or a poster. A lot of what I wound up watching when I was younger was literally just from me walking through a video store, looking at titles and then just writing down like some of the DVD covers like, oh, that looks interesting. A lot of mm -hmm. movies that I really enjoyed, I found mm -hmm. through that. And right. then obviously as the internet grew and it became more commonplace and IMDb and, you know, all that shit, it became a lot easier for me to find things, you know, Criterion, released Hausu and I looked at the poster on the Criterion website I was like that looks fucking cool and I watched it and one of my favorite movies you know so mm -hmm. right right yeah these uh these top movie lists are just playing with fire though like like when Empire puts them out whatever it uh, feels like it's just just to annoy people a lot of the time <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. do tell mm -hmm. you know it's just like really like what are you gonna put in the top 100 if it's only a hundred like a thousand yeah you have a lot more room but hundreds like you're going to be leaving stuff out that's just going to annoy people. And that's just always what yeah. it turns into, just people mocking them and pulling them apart. Yeah. The, the book I got is 500. So it's a little more. A little more. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. When you only include 100 and then you include some that are just like kind of shit. Remember that uh, best actors list that we went over and it was like, who was <laughs> yeah, in that? Yeah. It was like Keanu Reeves and there was a couple other like really, I think Denzel yeah. Washington was like the number on one of all right. time. Yeah, it was Melissa McCarthy too. But Denzel Washington's a good actor. I like Keanu Reeves. He's not a great actor though. Keanu like, Reeves in the Francis top. McDormand, Daniel Day-Lewis, Marlon Brando. I think it was even like top 50 actors of all time. I think it was something yeah, stupid like, like that. On. Yeah, I'd say Daniel Day Lewis by far is number one, and like Meryl Streep is up there, and like all these fucking people that are, that, like Keanu Reeves, Tom Cruise, really. Yeah, I don't know because like if I'm looking at especially a top 100 list, I'm scrolling through this one mm -hmm. on Empire right now. Avengers Assemble is on it. Interesting, but other than it's just I'm looking at all of these. I'm like these are all the, just the ones that are on everyone's list. If if somebody if mm -hmm. a publication mm -hmm. makes a top 100 movies. These are just the same movies from the like. I don't see anything unique about this. So what's the point? I guess the point is for people who <laughs> don't know the top two hundred and fifty on IMDb exists or something. Like I don't know. Yeah. Interstellar. That's a weird one. Well, there's some live variety. Well, Interstellar. That's a good one. Like that's an interesting choice. I think that's really interesting because it's more recent. You know. Yeah. I love that movie. I think it's great to put in. Just I don't know. It's one hundred. But you're right. It's usually like it's usually the Godfather. Like Citizen Kane, Pulp Fiction, yeah. Like I can read them all out. These are just yeah, really Casablanca. obvious. Taxi Driver, Seven, yeah, The Big yeah. Lebowski, of Casablanca, course. The Good, Bad, and the Ugly, Heat, Terminator Two, yeah. Matrix. Like these are all just yeah, the you movies definitely watch that all those. The, I'm for sure. Yeah, that, those are great. You should see these movies for sure. Those are the that's classics, like, right? But like, what what else is there, right? Like, I'm looking for some a little more now. Yeah, just count Lord of the Rings <laughs> as one movie. Jesus, uh -huh. Look at Dark taking up three spots no. on this list. <laughs> they have the Dark Knight trilogy on this list. Yeah, Dark Knight for sure. Raiders, um, Goodfellas, Pulp Fiction, Shawshank, Dark Knight, Empire, Godfather. Yeah, Shawshank. The, the way to win. I'd say Godfather is the best, and then Goodfellas and Pulp Fiction. But like everyone yeah. has that. Like, <laughs> but you know, those yeah, are also I mean, you know those are great movies. Like... like you can't really argue. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't have a lot of issues with that Empire list. It's just the list that people do. Yeah, if there was exactly. something on there, like, I don't know, like Pixar's Inside Out would trigger me a little or something. I'm just trying to think of one where, like, I don't know, Precious or... <laughs> Precious. Uh, yeah, that's a little pretentious. <laughs> but, you know, I feel yeah, like for the most part, it's fine. It's just like, whatever they, you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. That's how yeah, I feel no about it. no strong feelings. Yeah, I don't really have any strong other. feelings about it. I just... There should be a more you like unique less like top hundred action movies, maybe top hundred horror movies. So you just yeah. get more variety and like yeah. what the, the quality no and like genres are very different. Like Texas Chainsaw, if if those same qualities were in like a drama, it might not work as much, but in a horror film it really works. Yeah. It, it's just like, you know, very mm -hmm. different. It, it's like um the Oscars or whatever. <laughs> when they just like nominate best movie or whatever. 
even though the Golden Globes got a fucking ton of criticism. Yeah, so broad. Ton of criticism. I fucking hate the Golden Globes. So like, at least they go do like comedy and drama. Like, at least they acknowledge <laughs> it's different. I feel like I would be pretty confident making like a, a list of like top X movies you might not have heard of from the year like 2010 to 2021. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and I'll keep inching back to like, I don't know, like, yeah, 2007 to 2021. Any any year that I've done a list video that I'm like pretty confident about finding some some real uh, yeah. la, true hidden gems sort of things. Some gems, yeah, yeah. And I feel like a list like that might actually be useful to some people. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, for sure. I guess it's just opinion. Okay. Al Pacinus says, have you ever lost a friend because of a movie? Either because you laughed at a movie they found serious or endearing, or being insulted by the fact that they enjoyed a certain piece of media and vice versa. I had a friend who talked during a movie. I didn't see them anymore after that. <laughs> they were like one of those like constantly talk. Like yeah, he would just like shout out jokes. Like I don't know, like the aliens were bleeding. He says like jizz or something. Like oh, what is that jizz? Like like, not even like, funny. Yeah. like dumb shit. Like. Oh, yeah. so annoying. Like, shut read the, fuck the room. Up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, read the room. Yeah. It's like a movie theater. <laughs> yeah. There I was in I was kind of dating a person and they showed me riding the bus with my sister and they were like really seriously emotionally into it and I was like trying my goddamn hardest but it was so fucking oh, no. awful and I was just like I can't. <laughs> That's pretty hilarious. It's like so funny though. <laughs> Rosie really- O'Donnell. <laughs> I mean, if anybody's curious, I made a review yeah, on it a while back. <laughs> yeah, riding yeah, I the saw, bus with I my saw sister. the review. It's it's such a, such she a is not film. a convincing, not a convincing like disabled person oh, for sure. Like, it's, it's, such, not... it's such a funny movie. <laughs> it's, it's mostly really boring, funny, but... actually. It's just to see yeah. someone not act well. Just to see like the acting. I mean, like from Rosie O'Donnell, like she's clearly not disabled, but she's like, ah, oh yeah, bah, like, the way whatever. she talks like, is just so uh, insane. That's not good acting. That's actually kind of offensive. Yeah. Like, why you? Bah, bah, bah. like whatever <laughs> it's so weird yep <laughs> i'm not even gonna tell i i could <laughs> probably replicate yeah. it but i'm not gonna <laughs> yeah it's just not like why would you yeah there is you something uniquely movie? horrible about when you're like sat down to watch something um and like the person you're watching with isn't <laughs> doesn't feel the same way or, like, yeah it's the total opposite when you hype it up a little <laughs> yeah 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 I've I've never like lost mm. a friend or anything because of it. It's just more of a case of yeah, like, same. if someone says their favorite movie is like <laughs> Step Brothers or something, then I probably just won't bring it up or whatever. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing that does kind of pop into my mind is like a weird. What's the best way to describe it? I like lost a friend for reasons that were like it was like quite religious, like really mm-hmm. heavily religious and that came in the way i guess um yeah but it was just like weird to me because he like was obsessed with halo <laughs> the video game halo and the franchise halo i just thought it was ironic considering what the like games are about and it, yeah. like, that love never <laughs> left him it's just quite weird that is kind of funny mm-hmm. well i don't know if funny is the right word but <laughs> i suppose there's humor to it <laughs> okay yeah this can't get over rosie o'donnell i know <laughs> so weird <laughs> There's nothing worse than like, well, music's the same way. Like any kind of performance trying to replicate yeah. that. It's a very difficult performance mm-hmm. to pull off. Was music this year? Uh-huh. Sorry? Because I keep thinking about music. Yeah. <laughs> Remember music? Oh, th- so yeah. Music. Okay, sorry. That's You were talking about the film. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, so yeah. difficult. Yeah, music. Sia's yeah, music. music. And even then, you're, you, you yes. could be talking yeah, it's about... Yeah, true, true. I didn't even realize how stupid that is. It's a terrible music. title. Yeah. Oh, that's a terrible title. I didn't even think about that. Way too broad. Yeah, that's that, so that does <laughs> invoke uh, riding the bus with my sister. I think I did make that comparison. Okay. Yeah, there's yeah, just this one sure. scene from that movie that uh, I, I keep revisiting because it's so funny oh, to yeah. me. It's one of the like musical numbers where the the guy who like holds down music to calm her down yeah. has like a musical number where he's on like a treadmill with like the David Byrne big suit on. <laughs> it's, yeah, it really tickles me for some reason whenever I watch it. With these, like, <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. <laughs> it's so I, funny. I have family members and friends who I love or, you know, autistic <laughs> mm-hmm. or whoever. Mm-hmm. And I, I love them so much. Um, But like, when you see it in a movie and it's just like some guy going bah, 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 like a really bad actor it's oh, fucking so terrible it's not yeah. convincing at all especially when you have experience mm-hmm. with that kind of thing mm-hmm. or with those people For sure yeah of course but dumb johnson asks this oh great simple 
favorite swear word or phrase? Hmm. I say <laughs> I've, wa- I've watched Deadwood oh, yeah? recently. These say cocksucker a lot. It's a mm. fucking. I it's say really piss. Cool. Never really used that much. I say piss more average piss. than the. Or sorry, more than the average human being. <laughs> it just comes up. How about comes shit? Out I like shit. I say shit a lot. Piece of shit. Holy yeah. shit. The son of a shit. And then fuck. Shit and fuck are my favorite. Piss is one of those ones that not a lot of other people use as frequently. And if I'm playing a video game on stream, it just comes out. Which one? Sorry, mm-hmm. piss. Piss. Just just exclaiming. Oh yeah, piss. yeah. Nah, piss is a big one. Piss is a good, but it's tame. I like shit and fuck. Those are hardcore. Yeah, fuck has a certain <laughs> energy behind it that nothing else can match to me. Just a good fuck. British people can say cunt. Australian uh, people. Yeah, true. Only British um, people. That was more of a Australia. and Australian people. Yeah. You're more into that in like mm. secondary school as you just every other word is oh, it's real bad. Um, yeah. Also, fag. <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah, I, mean, I can't say that. Either, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're the you're the one person that can't say it on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. That's our privilege. Yeah, just saying Jesus, like just saying Jesus Christ, blaspheming. Quite yeah. like that. Yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ. Jesus. Apparently blasphemous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like you don't, you wouldn't think Jesus Christ is a bad, like, uh, swear, mm-hmm. but it is. Like, the way you to say use it. the Lord's name in vain in any way, like, some people get really offended. Yeah, by it's a weird one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because some people think hell is a mm-hmm. swear word, also. That's weird. That's like yeah, a low cadence. Right? Like hell is, like, that's like a such a low, <laughs> for me, that's such a low, like, that's a one out of ten curse word, I know, but hell. Like, there's it's so some tame. Like, people. you hear that in Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, like, Will Smith's yeah. is hell. Like, that's how tame it is. You know, it's so tame. Actually, yeah, the, like, the religious words, like, adding holy before shit does make it something new and fresh. Like, holy shit. It does mm-hmm. kind of hit different to mm-hmm. just a normal shit. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, good thing this is at the end of the podcast and not the first 30 seconds or we'd be demonetized. Because <laughs> that makes a difference. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, fuck YouTube. shit. Fuck, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah swear words are fun but they you know i don't know they They're have fun. as much power as you give them i've always kind of had that mentality you know like if nobody freaks out about them yeah. then they don't mean anything it's not magic this isn't a curse i know we call them curse words but it's not an actual fucking curse okay mm-hmm. <laughs> grow up <laughs> they're words mm-hmm. sure words have context you can be offensive in certain contexts and others but even if you ignore you know like it what's more offensive somebody saying fag or somebody saying i don't believe gay people should have rights right you can say that you can say more offensive things without using like a word out of context i've always kind of had that mentality mm. but you can't win them all and some mm. people are sensitive and so i just try not to be rude so yeah the more sure. you like break down language the more just god it gets complicated yeah exactly and like as we've already mentioned cunt means something incredibly different depending on what country yeah. you're in and also fag mm-hmm yeah, like Edgar Wright said, "cunt" in an interview. It's not even anything. Now. Yeah, <laughs> really, <that's funny. laughs> but like an American saying that, like their career would be over. Like um, I imagine a politician saying it or some shit like that. Like it's just not. Yeah, it's yeah. not the same. Yeah, it's so weird. Like yeah, politicians say what pussy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah my, my prime minister did blackface, <laughs> so, and he is elected for the third term. <laughs> Fuck. Hey, Jesus. no one's perfect, you know. Yeah. <laughs> We're bringing it back. <laughs> All right, that was a good last question. Yeah, like the, when the president talks, like like the the saloon owner in Deadwood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got we've all got really funny leaders in our countries right now, <laughs> all three yeah. of us. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's some well, amusing. Yeah, Trump's oh, yeah, gone, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. Trump. Like but he Wallace didn't win. Character. Biden didn't win the election though. Sorry, I'll, I won't go there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the leader of the Republican Party. A few party, but, years yeah. when he's out. <laughs> Biden's yeah, kind of funny yeah. too. Biden yeah. is funny. He falls asleep. Sleepy Joe. <laughs> I don't mind Biden. I'm, I'm more. I don't mind him. Yeah, I won't say like I don't mind him. Mm. All right. Told right. Great last mm. question. He's tolerable. I think it's time for a uh, recommendation from Alex. So yes, yeah, my recommendation, and I wanted to keep in the horror theme. Um, I, 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 I kind of want to recommend a double bill, but I don't want to push it. Um, That's fine. We can do we can do double bill. Sure. I just think it would make sense. Is all if I, it might make sense if I sure. say the movies that 
It's actually a director. We've covered a fair few of his movies on the show, but this is one of my favorites from him, that being Peter Jackson's Brain Dead. Fuck yeah. Never seen And it. what's the other one? Well, I've never seen Bad Taste, but it okay. is like a horror comedy in a similar vein. I feel like maybe putting them together would make sense for sure. like a horror one too. Okay. Yeah, I'll How watch both of them. Better. Sure. I've seen Brain Dead. The Blu-ray is very difficult to get, but I got one. It's also also this is very important. Alternate title is Dead Alive. So you might find it under that. Oh yeah. Sometimes it's Dead Space mm-hmm. Alive, sometimes it's yeah. Dead Dash Alive. But and sometimes yeah. it's brain dead. So you might have a difficult yeah, time yeah. finding the movie, but there's only one cut of it, I think. Yeah, that's yeah, weird. I don't know. Is sometimes is titles from, uh, get changed. Is it because he's marketing. from New Zealand? Distribution thing. From... Uh, yeah, who knows? Yeah, like in New Zealand, it had different yeah. title maybe. Yeah. Never seen Bad never Taste. Yeah, maybe. Cool. So brain dead, dead alive, and bad taste. Perfect. Okay, awesome. Excellent. Excite. Hype. Damn. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Ooh. if you don't want to be spoiled for brain dead and <laughs> bad taste, watch them before the next episode. These episodes come out every two weeks, uh, but you can listen to them early as they're edited. Uh, if you go to sardonicast.com and sign up for premium, only $2 a month. That's like 50 cents a week. And also, we didn't bombard you with a bunch of uh, sponsorships. You listen to other podcasts, they do that. Also, patreon.com slash sardonicast. <laughs> and uh, we got merch, so maybe you get that. Christmas is coming. Do your shopping early. And then, yeah, for anybody expecting us to cover Venom, Let There Be Carnage, it, we might not all be able to see it by next episode, so probably the episode after, just because of the different releases in different countries sort of thing. So be patient about that one, and we should be able to k- do it by the episode after next one. Yeah. Thank you all for listening. Happy Shrek. Don't get chainsawed. Thank you all. <laughs> Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Take care. <laughs>